or are you still hungry? ESPN Plus Hockey Night, presented by New Amsterdam Vodka. Beautiful images from the two-time defending champs. Tampa Bay Lightning, we get set to go here. Moments away from face-off, Canadians and Lightning. A.J. Malesko back with me, and really it's been an up-and-down calendar year for the Montreal Canadiens. It is ending on a very low note, and really it kind of started that way back in February. Claude Julien fired. Dominic Ducharme brought in to be the head coach. Somehow they advanced to the Stanley Cup final, barely got in the playoffs, almost won the Cup. And then July and August, Weber injuries. To know they loosen the free agency. A host of players. Pretty much the end of the road for Mark Bergeron. It's a tough job to hold for that long. He had reached the end. His tank was on empty. And so, AJ, what's the future like? Yeah, you know, you look at this kid, Cole Caulfield. He came in hot last year. He played a total of 30 games, scored 17 points, high expectations. People thought he might be in the running for the Calder. It's been a slow start for him. He was sent down to the AHL in November. But you know what? A toast to the future, and this guy's going to be big for the Montreal Canadiens. Meanwhile, Steven Stamkos has been outstanding. He's having a career year in terms of points per game, AJ, 1.21. Yeah, you know, he's uh, with Kucherov and Point out of the lineup. This captain has stepped up on the power play all over the ice. He leads the team with 14 goals. He's the only double digit scorer on the team. And it's been incredible to see what he's been able to do, how he stepped up. And he's clutch, 65 game winning goals. He just passed Marty St. Louis for the most in franchise history in their latest game against Vegas. He's on a Hall of Fame trajectory, should get career goal 500 sometime next season. And welcome back, Braden Point. They didn't really miss him. They just kept winning and winning and winning. But great to have that playoff monster back. It's the Lightning and Canadians moments away. Back to the studio, Arda Ocal. Thank you very much, Bucci. Here is what we have in store, Canadians and Lightning. First game since December 16th for the Montreal Canadiens. 109 goals allowed this season, which is the most in the NHL. Meanwhile, the Lightning are 8-1-0 in their last nine games. Ryan Callahan, Kevin Weeks, Art Cal here with you, studio from Bristol, Connecticut. We already heard Bucci say it's, it's been a supersized break with the games postponed yesterday. There are three games tonight based on more postponements. And let's be honest, this is more of an AHL game that we're going to be seeing here. Syracuse taking on Laval with this <laughs> game here. The question is, elephant in the room, Cali, should this game be played at all? Yes, I think it should. I absolutely think it should be played. But where my issue is, is consistency. We see, right? We're, we're canceling some games that are missing five players. We're keeping games where some games are missing nine players. Talking to players, talking to management, talking to the trainers. It's a guessing game right now. At least get some consistency to it. And I, I, I agree, though, this game should be being played. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's been the sentiment from everybody that we've spoken to. They want to play. Players want to play. The staff wants to play. Uh, I mean, listen, ultimately, they've all been very diligent following the protocols, adhering to those protocols that are very strict. And ultimately, let's get on with the schedule. For the most part, everybody's been asymptomatic. That's the key. If you're asymptomatic and you have cold-like symptoms, how many players have played, Cali? <laughs> Oh, yeah. With it's serious. Not just, it's not just cold like symptoms. I'm going like to get so like long. <laughs> with serious, I mean really super serious surgery, pre-surgery, through the playoffs, through the postseason. I mean, yeah, I, I'm in favor of them. Playing. I'm sure both of you can think of at least one time in your careers where you felt extremely sick and you still played. Uh, I, I wish like it was only one. Like, that yeah. literally started in, in Adam, Toronto Red Wings. <laughs> literally Adam. Like North Bay Tournament. I swear to God, I'm telling you. Yes, the, North, thing, you? the players know the risk at this yes. point, right? So it's on the players. If you don't feel comfortable enough playing, if you don't feel comfortable enough showing exactly. up to the rink, it should be on the players. It's a player's choice. We're the ones that have our body in harm, right? Yeah. It's not the management. It's not them. It's us. We're rolling on the ice, putting our body at, body at harm. So yeah. ultimately, we should have that choice. Totally. How many surgeries did you offset? I know I've said a lot of them. Too many. The plate. Weeks, I don't, plate, weeks, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> right? So, yeah, I know. We feel good now. We're limber now. Everything's good. But when you really think about that, there's so many different ailments that players pay, play through. 
and continue to push through. So, yeah, I, I definitely favor them playing. Right so, now. I know I was ripping really about the uh, AHL comm here, but this does mean a lot of players are making their NHL debuts or they get opportunities yeah, exactly. to play. There are two more games. These are the ones that I was mentioning. Coyotes and Sharks also exclusive to ESPN Plus and the Golden Knights and Kings with with market restriction is available on ESPN Plus. All right, to call the game, John Buchigross, AJ Malesko. Great to be back with you, John Butchergrass, AJ Malesko. Thank you, Arda. And nowhere is a game affected because of COVID than in the net, really, between the pipes. We have a couple of goaltenders, not the starters for sure. Sam Montumbo will be the tender for the Canadiens. He has some NHL experience, 33 games played, big athletic. He'll be the Canadiens goalie tonight. And Max Legacy was at home in Quebec City for Christmas break. He got a call Sunday night. He should be on standby. He drove to Syracuse, New York the next day. He practiced. He flew to Tampa last night. And Max Legacy between the pipes for the Lightning as both Vasilevsky and Elliott on the COVID protocol list. It'll be interesting to see how those goalies step up right now. And especially you're looking at, at the, for Montreal, you, Tampa Bay, they've got some firepower out here, even with some of their guys that are on the list. After six days of no hockey, we are back here on ESPN Plus and Legacy. We'll freeze it nine seconds in. Yeah, you look at the Tampa Bay roster, really, they're pretty much in a full slate. And that's what Coach Lalonde is going to be looking at. I mean, Kalorn, Point, Joseph, Radish, Stamkos, Palat, Maroon, Colton, Perry, Fortier now has eight games, Kachuk, Riley Nash, all the defense were there except for Sean Day making his NHL debut. So here come the Canadiens. Early pressure. And really the goaltenders, AJ, is something that that's that's the the great unknown here in this game. Yeah, it really is. And you look at Tampa Bay when they had their two goalies, Elliot and Vasilevsky, go on, on COVID protocol just a couple days ago. They had their goaltender coach, Franz Jean, in the in the net uh, at practice. And he did pretty well, by the way. I saw some of the videos of him out there. And they also had a shooter tutor for, I don't know, maybe they're Mr. Goalie. That's what we used to call him, but uh, in one of the nets, too. So it's been interesting for these guys. They've got to get out there. They've got to figure it out. And don't always, they've got to roll with whatever, whoever shows up. Look at Savard dance. Backhander is saved. The former Lightning helped them win a Stanley Cup. 58 with some dirty dangles there. Here in the early going in Tampa Bay. The Canadians really struggling this year. The point percentage is the second lowest in franchise history. They have a real hard time scoring goals. Nick Suzuki leads the team in scoring. Suzuki with 18 points. That's tied for 123rd in the league. That's their leading score. Well, and none of the no player on the Montreal Canadiens roster has more than 10 has 10 goals. Nobody is in the double digits. Only three teams, New Jersey and Arizona, are with them in that stat. Here come the Canadiens now. Jake Evans out there, former Notre Dame centerman with Jesse Yelonen, Alex Belzeal. Luda hits the ice, and here come the Lightning. Victor Hedman having a great year for the Lightning. Back in that Norris Trophy conversation, career high in assists per game and points per game this year for big number 77. Great step right there for by 77 in white. Kulak right on the blue line denying the zone entry. Ruda will dump it in high off the glass, stays in play, and here comes Corey Perry. Tries to dance. He gets broken up. And back to get it, Sean Day. NHL debut for Day after 241 AHL games. He's making his debut tonight on ESPN+. Plus. Has the puck now. Backhands it up, makes a nice calm play to Perry. And here comes Colton. At the same high school as A.J. Malesko. He spent a year at the Taft School. A little younger than me. We didn't overlap. Really, it really wouldn't call it a high school. <laughs> it's a prep school. Prep school, yes. Pat Maroon. Three straight Stanley Cups out there for the Lightning with Perry and Colton. Both teams changing. Zach Bogosian. To Riley Nash. Nash to Forche. Backhand. Saved by Montembeau. Just mentioning that play by Brett Kulak, number 77, right after you're talking about Hedman right here, good play, and then a step here by Kulak outside of his own blue line. 
preventing that zone entry, that's going to be something that's important for the Montreal defense. As quick as Tampa Bay transitions, especially with Braden Point in the lineup, the way that they're able to transport the puck through the neutral zone, the D has to be really aware of that blue line. Point out there on the faceoff, had seven goals and six assists in 16 games before being injured. Lightning went 11-2-1 without him. He's waved out of the faceoff circle, and Joseph loses it to Cedric Paquette, the former Lightning player, helped them win that Stanley Cup, the first one. There's point now. Bogosian back to point. Going to take some time to get some game rust off. What's it like, AJ, when a player's out for a long time, then you're right back into game action? You know, it's tough that you can't replicate game action no matter what you do in practice, however many small games you play or scrimmaging, nothing replicates it. So it takes a little time to get your timing. Get, get your legs, really, your, all of that, getting Braden Point. He started the game, which is, you know, you look at the way Tampa Bay handles it, get him out there, get some reps going. And before the before he was injured against in, against New Jersey, he was on a roll. He had had three goals in the four games prior to that. He was averaging about 20 minutes of ice per game. So he was logging a ton of minutes, eating up those minutes, and, and doing everything. Penalty kill, power play. He sort of was a jack of all trades for them and scoring big goals. Stamkos, Radish, Palat out there now. Stamkos back playing center. Really has thrived this year. We mentioned career high. 1.21 points per game. Here comes Suzuki in the clear. Across. Big save by Legacy on Drouin. The first great Great A chance of the game. Jonathan Drouin thought he had it, but a pad save by Legacy. You're talking about Victor Hedman. He's had such a good offensive year for Tampa Bay, and he's so good defensively. But watch this step. He comes up, and there's just sort of a flyby there by Palat, and it allows Montreal to take advantage in an odd man situation. Good back pressure from Tampa to prevent a really great A chance right there. Look at that stick position by Ruda. Good job by him, but it's that step in the neutral zone, a little bit loose and freewheeling by Tampa Bay. You know, they're used to playing with Vasilevsky behind them, who cleans up a lot of their messes. Shot by Drew and blocked. Puck goes into the corner. Gallagher, puck retriever, throws it back to Suzuki. To Drew and. Back to the point. Plague can't handle, comes all the way down, and Sam Montembeau will play. Some frustration there from Drew and with that missed pass. You can see him shaking his head and sort of one of something that this team they get they can't afford missed passes like that here comes plague 39th nhl game still looking for his first goal number 43 suzuki fires it across kulak walks in save by legacy good pressure from montreal early though they've had some time in the in the offensive zone only four minutes in right now but you can see they're trying to simplify they're trying to get pucks to the net test these goalies Texas goalie that they're going against, and it's just uh, they've got to keep it as simple as they can. If they can get a get up early and then they can lock it down, that's, that's what they're looking at. You know, I, I, John, you and I were talking early during the Open for these players, especially Montreal, over half this lineup that's out here is coming up from the AHL. For them, it's a huge opportunity. Energy, legs, see what they can do, and great experience. Runs along the wall, out there with Belzil and Yelona. Yuha, Yelonen's son, Yessi, his sixth NHL game. Belzeal's 11th NHL game. We mentioned Rafael Harvey Pinard's first NHL game, along with Corey Schuderman. So really, Montreal much more affected in terms of very young players. Tampa Bay pretty much has their full complement. Obviously, a couple key players are out. But for the most part, we mentioned this year, no Kucherov, no points. But Tampa has played 30 games this year. Kalorin's played them all. Palat's played them all. Hedman's played them all. So McDonough's played them all. Yeah, McDonough's underrated. You look at the way Hedman gets a lot of the attention. McDonough is so solid defensively for the Tampa Lightning. Just about five minutes in, not a lot of action in the early going. Shot, there's a save by Montembeau, rebound in front, never got there. Puck bounces around, Nash back to the point, nice play, back towards the net, trickles wide. Aggressive pinch from Bogosian. Here's Nash. Riley Nash, his sixth game with the Lightning. Pressured out, the puck comes down. Here comes Cole Caulfield, we talked about him before the game. Looking to get that scoring touch back. Won the Hobie Baker last year at Wisconsin. 
joined the Canadians late in the season and was really an impact player late in the season and in the postseason, but hasn't got it going this year. Just one goal in 23 games. There's Kalorn. He went to Harvard like AJ. He dumps it in. There's Romano. Throws it across. Savard. Puck bounces up. Stays in play. Almost went in the Tampa Bay bench. There's Matthew Joseph. He's on the top line with Point and Kalorn in this one. There's another little miscue there in the Watch out. Turnover. Point. Shot over the net. Ruda, aggressive pinch. Comes around. Here comes Hedman. Boy, he's moving so much better this year. He's going to throw it back out of the zone. Yeah, you talk about Hedman. He had that surgery. He torn meniscus back in March. He played through it this season and then had this offseason surgery. It's, it's incredible to see when he's firing on all cylinders and he really has his legs going, how well he can move. And there's an offside at the line. That will give us our first. TV timeout of this game. Great to have the NHL back here in Tampa Bay. ESPN Plus Hockey Night is presented by New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka of the NHL. Drink responsibly. Nikita Kucherov's getting closer. It looks like he's week to week now with the Lightning. He's been getting some reps in, AJ. Yeah, he had a, a successful procedure on October 26. He's missed 27 games, but he is back skating. That's exciting news for Tampa Bay and, and their fans and taking some reps on that top power play unit. Such an incredible story last year, missing the entire regular season yeah. and then coming back and just lighting it up like he did through that long playoff run on the way to the Cup. What a play. What a playoff monster. It led the playoffs and points the last two years. He could have won the Conn Smythe both years. He didn't win it either year. Here comes Stamkos. Has Hedman charging to the net. Clegg is able to break that up. Turnover. Ruda tries to kick it to Radish. But the puck comes out of the zone. And back comes Cedric Paquette. The former Bolt. Hedman. Behind the net. Vedemo out there with Paquette. And Michael Pizzetta. Got that salad flowing tonight. That's offside at the line. Delayed and then tapped. Well, we've been talking about Hedman and in the way he moved, but he reads the game so well. Watch this play. It comes, he, he reads the play. It looks a little bit risky, but when you've got a 6-6 six, six frame and a long stick, he jumps up, good read, and, and is able to get in the play, get a shot off. He can be so offensively gifted. He's won the Norris in the past. You can see why he plays at both ends of the ice. And he's just dominant. He doesn't get himself out of position because he's such a great skater. 31 years old, won the Norris back in 2018, Conn Smythe winner in 2020. Point and Kucherov both could have won Conn Smythe, but they again, neither won in either of the Stanley Cup runs. Vasilevsky and Hedman pass in front, but broken up, and here come the Canadians the other way. Both teams been a little close to the vest with their Backup goaltenders in there here in Tampa Bay. Taken there by number 79, Ross Colton, former Vermont Catamount. And here come the Lightning. Patrick Maroon. Maroon in the zone. A big body in the corner. Montreal breaks out of their zone. Bogosian tries to recover. He does as Montreal is changing. Tampa Bay is changing. Three shots on goal for Montreal, just one for the Lightning. That's tipped, will not be icing. Legacy plays it behind his cage. Turns around very calmly to Fortier, bounces right to Nash. Nash over to Kachuk. And cleared out there by Alex Romanov. So not much going for Tampa Bay here. Good crowd on hand in Tampa Bay. Montembeau slaps it away. High stick penalty coming up on Tampa Bay. So Montreal is going to go on an early power play here. And that's been a big issue for the Canadiens. Their power play has been really abysmal this year. Currently tied with Arizona for worst in the NHL. 12.5%. Here is the call. Lightning, number 82. Two minutes slashing. That's Dean Morton with the call. And Fortier in the box. Here's a look at it. it it's behind the. It was a great play by Savard. Close the gap and then see the slash as he was right here for you in the bottom of your screen. He's got one hand and it comes up. All those the stick work around the hands and up high to Suzuki's face lands him in the box. Haven't scored a power play goal in their last five games.
just 0 for 7, so not, not even drawing penalties. So here they go. Montreal with a shot, tipped wide. Gallagher setting up right in front of Legacy. Caulfield's over here, he'll try to race it down. He can't, and shorthanded. Here comes Kalorn. Out there with Nash. Kalorn, shot. Never got through. Not off the goal post. From Nash, looking for his first goal of the year. Back to McDonough, out there with Bogosian. Bogosian has room to fire, he does. It's just wide as McDonough, his defenseman pair, wiped right in front of the net. Tampa Bay with a good shorthanded bit of pressure here. As Montreal tries to get set up, and Hedman comes out fresh on the ice. Perfect start of this PK for the Lightning, and now they have it, and now they're going to clear it. Some of their best offensive opportunities have come just in those, that first 30 seconds of this penalty kill. Sammy Nuku, good job gloving that one down. Gallagher's out there now. Montreal tries to get set up. Suzuki throws it back to the point, but no one's there. And watch out, here comes Joseph, shorthanded, spins away. Here comes Hedman. Boy, is he skating well. What a difference. Shoots that one wide. Ruda will then throw it in. Montreal will try to get set here. Less than a minute left in this power play opportunity. Canadians only scoring 2.13 goals a game, sixth lowest in franchise history. Their lowest since the 1933-34 season. Edwin can't get it out. Here come the Canadians, set up. Yelonen's out there, number 56, looking for a one-timer. They go to Yelonen. Walking in, in front. They save Legacy. Evans back to the point, but again, Plague was not at the point, and the puck comes out. Back in the zone comes Yelonen. Down low to Clegg, in front. Puck is loose, but gets out of the zone, and Gabe Forche standing up. One shot on goal on that power play. Tampa Bay had that one post hit. Foot knocks it out nicely to Palat. Palat will go back, and now here's Stamkos. Can't quite tip it in himself, and back the other way. Buzetta walking in, backhand save by Legacy. A nice one, and open in front, score! Montreal strikes first. Lucas Vedemo, the Swede, gets his second goal of the year, and this is eighth game, and Montreal leads 1-0. All smiles on the Montreal bench. That's what they wanted. They, they didn't generate much offense at the beginning of the power play, but then they found some urgency, and it's the great play right there. One-handed play, gets the puck in the net. Good save there by the goaltender, and then he just gets out of position. But you look at the way Montreal is playing. They're simple, they're gritty, they're going to the front of the net. And look at Vedemo uh, right there. He's in the right position. Nobody's marking him. One thing that for Tampa Bay, they are used to having an all-world goaltender back there in Andre Vasilevsky, but they need to come back. They need to make sure that they're funneling back to the front of the net, giving their goaltender, uh, Legacy, some support. Vedamo, 25-year-old Swede, turns 26 in January, just his eighth NHL game. Third round pick back in 2015, so it's taken a while to get here, but he's trying to make the most of his opportunity in this strange NHL season. Canadian strike first. In front, here comes Tampa Bay. Save. So close to tying that thing up was Ross Colton and the Lightning. Well, you know, you, you talked about how their, the Montreal's power play has been problematic, but they generated that momentum right there. They generated a little bit of confidence, simplified, got the pucks in the neck, and took, took advantage of a goaltender miscue. Six shots on goal for Montreal. Three for Tampa Bay. Back comes Gallagher now. Gallagher in front. Suzuki throws it across. Drouin had a chance, but a great defensive play by Colton. Here's Savard. He'll throw it at the net. Rebound, but glove by Legacy. So Montreal led by that man, Lucas Vedemo. Just his eighth NHL game. But it was really Michael Pizzetta with some nice dancing, which set up that goal. And Vedemo and the Canadians lead the champs 1-0. The NHL All-Star Fan Vote allows fans to cast their votes to determine the captain for each division's team in the 2022 Honda NHL All-Star Weekend in Las Vegas, February the 4th and 5th on ESPN and ABC. Vote today on the NHL app or visit NHL.com slash vote. Steven Stamkos would be a good guy to vote for.
but he and the Lightning are down one nothing. Kulak keeps it in. Legacy blockers it in the corner. Montreal has owned the early parts of this game, but here comes a two on one. Kalorn and point, 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 goal. Mm -hmm. First game back from injury, first tuck. <laughs> and it was a beauty. Look at this breakout. Great play by Matthew Joseph to recognize Braden Point with the speed coming through the neutral zone. Alex Kalorn stays right with him, drawing the defender, giving Braden Point this space. It's a two on one, and he pulls back. You, know, you look at the way that the Montreal is defending. It's a great play by Clay, and then you see Harvey Pinard in his first game in the NHL. He does the right thing. He takes Kalorn. He takes the empty. The, the open guy, but it's just a beautiful move and an incredible finish by Braden Point. 1-1 one, one here in the first. Back just in time. As a bunch of players put on the COVID protocol list for Tampa Bay, the first time they've dealt with this all season. They were doing wonderfully in that department down here in Florida. But now a long list of players goes on it, but guess who comes back just in time? Braden Point. Here they come looking for more. In front! What a save! Rebound trickled across in the air. Stamkos from Hedman almost made it two to one. Tampa Bay. They continue to threaten Ruda, but it's blocked by Sam Matumbo. And you look at this. You just mentioned Hedman, and you glance up, and then he's back on the point. He's covering a tremendous amount of ice. Watch. He got a little open hip there. He comes across, and it's a great save by Montembeau. And then Niku comes across too, helping on the Stamkos cover. Doesn't quite get his stick up. Watch this. Niku's got his stick under him, just not strong enough. Stamco still is able to get a shot on goal. 52 seconds after Adamo scored paint. Point ties it up. So both goals scored within 52 seconds, and we're 1-1 here in Tampa Bay. A great response by Tampa Bay. You knew that they had it. They had those chances in the penalty kill, and then it's Braden Point that just they can't believe they went 11 2 and one without the dynamic scoring that he offers. And well, they got Vasilevsky, who's certainly the best goalie in the world. And we mentioned, you know, Hedman hasn't missed a game and such great experience on that blue line with Ryan McDonough as well, who's really thriving here in Tampa Bay. He was a monster last playoff season. There he is right there uh, with Cal Foote, Adam Foote's son. Big hit in the corner. Foot goes down from the former Bolt. Cedric also, Paquette. We mentioned in the open too, Steven Stamkos, who missed so much, has missed so much injury time over the last couple of years. He's playing inspired hockey right now. He's back better than ever from some of the surgeries that he's had, and he's picked up a lot of slack from Point and Kucherov. Suzuki out there, he's moving well tonight. Drew Ann's wrist shot just wide. He had Legacy beat high glove. Here comes Point again. He's got Kalorn behind him. Working on Clay. Throws it up the wall, taken by Kalorn, back to the point. Here's Hedman. Looking for a lane. Wrist shot deflected up into the netting. The faceoff will stay in the Canadian end. Let's go. It's going down. We a generation of legends in the making. It's going down right now. Point back out there, the Lightning. They've climbed to second in the NHL in the overall standings and point percentage behind only Carolina. Their 44 points are most in the NHL, one ahead of Carolina and Washington as they play tonight. Two other games going on later tonight. This is the only game going on as we speak. Here on ESPN Plus, John Butchergross and A.J. Malesko with you and Braden Point's return. And he has already scored to tie this game at one, and he has the puck now to Joseph. Joseph over to point now. He's got Ruda behind him. He's going to stop along the wall. Outmanned by Montreal, but here's Kalorn to help. And Joseph. Edmonds on the weak side. Puck bounces around. Taken by Kalorn. To point! strikes twice for Braden Point. Well, welcome back. You watch this board battles here. You got Braden Point, Kalorn, Joseph. They're in a great supportive position here. And then it's Alex Kalorn. He comes up and Braden Point actually picks the pocket and Alex Kalorn dishes to him for a beauty assist. It looks like he's going to shoot all the Montreal Canadiens focus on number 17 in 
blue and ignore number 21 who ends up burying it. And you know, John, what was I saying earlier about takes a little bit of time to get your timing back if you've missed some games? I don't think Braden Point got the memo. <laughs> well, when you're three feet from the net, you can put some things home, and he's done that. Yeah, well, he also is the board battle, though. He did yeah. such a good job in that uh, uh, along the wall, and then he picks the pocket of the Montreal Canadiens as they're trying to come out. So it's just these little timing things, and even through the neutral zone, picking pucks out of the air. He looks pretty good. Two goals in two minutes and 42 seconds. 17th game of the year for Point. The patience, the mitts from seven goals to nine goals on the year. In two minutes and 42 seconds, the Bolts lead by one. Legend John Madden has passed away at the age of 85. The NFL announced Madden died unexpectedly on Tuesday morning. He joined the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2006 and won the Super Bowl with the Raiders in 1977. Was an iconic voice of generations. As an NFL analyst in the annual NFL video game still bears his name. John Butchergrass, back to you. That's just terrible news. No one's ever done it better in any sport than John Madden and what he did in football. And our condolences go out certainly to his family and the entire NFL. He helped change the league in many ways with his, again, unbelievable broadcasting and just the, the art and the heart that he brought to it. I just watched the All Madden presentation on Fox over the weekend. Just a, a wonderful, wonderful walk through his life and his supportive wife, who was really, really awesome in that special as well. And so again, just a, a sad day to die unexpectedly, John Madden. Well said, very sad news. Larger than life personality, incredible the way he changed. Incredible coach and then Changed the world of NFL broadcasting. That's right. He really was a, a great coach, AJ, going back to the AFL and to the Super Bowl winning Raiders and then the broadcasting arc and then the video game impact. What just the Madden game is certainly probably the most famous video game of all time in terms of a, a home system. So I'm sure join Sports Center throughout the night. They'll have all kinds of coverage, I'm sure, on John Madden talking to people who worked with him. Again, he was 85 years old. So Tampa Bay, the two-time defending champs, up two to one here late in the first. Bit of a slow start, AJ, off the break, and dealing with really the first time they've dealt with a COVID list and having kind of uh, to deal with that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, and you mentioned it, John Cooper, their coach, he found out day of game in Vegas uh, about four in the afternoon and that he, he had tested positive and they carried on. And, of course, since then, a couple players, a couple coaches have joined him. We had a chance to talk to the, uh, assistant coach Derek Golan, who is acting as head coach now, and he was talking about how what a great job Coop has done with this, not just the culture on the team with the players, but the culture of the coaching staff, too. So it was seamless. Got the puck again, looking for a hat trick. Here he comes, walking in, backhander, save. He's got it again. Point is suddenly owning the game. <laughs> Kalorn, he got an assist on that second goal, on that nice pass. The puck's going to come all the way down the ice. 19th career multi-goal game for Point, first this season. Joseph and Hedman with assists. Hedman now has 32 points. That leads all defensemen in the NHL. Forche back in there. Stolen by Clay. Here comes Kulak out of the zone to Paquette. Hedman steps up again. Very aggressive right in front of AJ. Almost cost the Canadians a goal early on. Ruda will dump it around. Fortier forechecking on Paquette. Puck comes out to Paquette's former number here in Tampa Bay. Still wearing the 13. Wart here in Tampa Bay. That's Boris Kachuk. And Kachuk in his line. He's will change. Five fresh skaters for the Lightning. Up two to one here in the first period. Nine shots on goal for each team with three minutes to go in the opening frame. And the We mentioned there's Sean Day, NHL debut, number 74. After 241 AHL games. Ross Colton with the acquisition of Nash at the center position. They can move Colton up the lineup now as they dealt with some of those center injuries. But now Point is back and Stamkos is back. 
Colton with your third line center. Of course, normally that's Sorelli, AJ, but he's on the COVID list. Well, and this line actually usually has Belmar that has been in there too. The three of those guys, Maroon and Belmar and Perry, have been their identity line. And, and you look at, there's Derek Lalonde. We spent some time with him on yeah. Zoom earlier today. He was great, very generous with his time and talking about, he actually was talking about this line out here right now with Colton coming in for Belmar. He said it's, it's pretty easy to put Colton in. He works hard. He's done a great job at both ends of the ice. And this line is not just their identity line. Actually, Pat Maroon calls them the school bus line. He said, we all carry each other. Derek Lalonde was a goalie at SUNY Cortland, a teammate of Nate Lehman, who's the head coach at Providence and the American World Junior team, who got an unfortunate situation today not being able to play with a couple of positive tests. Yeah, they had to forfeit that game against Switzerland, which was a huge disappointment. Brian McDonough chases it down in front of the Lightning bench. Two minutes to go here, two-minute warning. You can see this in line the first period. changing. Sorry, John, that, that I was just talking about that school bus line. And they, uh, Derek Lalonde was talking about how important they've been. You know, we talk about Stamkos and Point and missing Kucherov. And he said this line has created so much momentum for them. Over, and the latest game against Vegas was no exception when Belmire had a goal late in the second period to start their come from behind victory. Lightning it really up their four checking. They're starting to create turnovers, which is what they want to do against this young Montreal team is attack them and get those turnovers. And that certainly resulted in that second point goal. You know, it's impressive though. There's Kulak again, number 77 in white, stepping up. Their gap control is good, and it's been it's impressive here in this first period. They don't seem intimidated by the moment, and they don't seem intimidated by their opponents. ESPN Plus Hockey Night is brought to you by Verizon, the official 5G network of the NHL. Yeah, talking to Derek Lalonde, the Tampa Bay acting head coach, before this afternoon, of course, he won a championship in the USHL for the Green Bay Gamblers. Then it was on the Toledo. And he was a head coach there for the Toledo Walleyes and loved his time in Ohio. This was a guy who, again, was a college coach, suddenly went to the USHL, won a championship, or John Cooper won a championship years before, and then goes to the Walleye over the Iowa Wild in the American League to become a head coach there. So slowly working his way up, USHL, ECHL, AHL, and now he comes into the league as an NHL assistant coach, and now he's got his name on the cup, AJ. <laughs> Pretty good. You know, you work your way up, and, and he's, he deserves it. You can see the way he is. He's got a great a, a demeanor about him and a lot of respect from the players. Yeah, gave a little tip of the cap to Kenny Holland to kind of get him into the professional ranks and, and take that? those professional jobs. That was all about golf, wasn't it? The golf, and plus a little gold. Him and Kenny Holland, old, you know, a couple ex-little goaltenders stick together. Shot. Save there as nice little pushing and shoving. Oh, that cool out is there. Kalorn. It's good to see a little bit of this, a little bit of uh, heat, temperature rising, especially for the Montreal Canadiens, right? You look at the way this season has gone for them, a huge disappointment, and one of the most dangerous things with a young, cor young crew that they've got is to make that losing become normal and accepted, and, and they've got to have that fire and that passion and the protection of their goalie, and there's Clegg uh, and Kulak in there protecting Montembeau, making sure Kalorn isn't Kalorn's pretty, be pretty crafty in front of the net. Well, that was another turnover by Montreal. That's four checking. Kale Clegg's had a tough first period with multiple turnovers. Again, Point and Kalorn just picking their pockets and then getting scoring opportunities. Kalorn almost went that short side high to make it three to one. So Montreal will try to survive this first now after really playing very well early. Now they're just going to try to get out of here. Down two to one. Another turnover there off the four check. Colton that time took it away from Montembeau. Perry dancing in front. Maroon blocked. He throws it around now. Bogosian. The Canadians are trying to get to the room. Tampa Bay is pinching on both sides of the wall. Their forwards aggressively hitting. There's Maroon. Well, they can pinch because they've got the high guy. It was Colton right there, and now they've got Corey Perry back. These defense can be aggressive when they've got that F3 high in the zone. So Braden Point, they went 11 and 2 and 1 without him as he missed. His 14 games, but oh, it's so good to have him back. Two first period goals and the Lightning lead, two to one. Back to the studio, Arda Okal. Thank you, Bucci. Coming up on the Lexus First Intermission Report, Emily Kaplan on postponements and solutions. And Weeksy and Cali talk Braden Point's immediate impact.
Thank you for sticking with us. Another game has been postponed due to COVID. The game between the Detroit Red Wings and New York Islanders at UBS Arena on Wednesday. There are also other games that have been postponed for another reason due to attendance restrictions in certain cities in Canada. There you see the list. T uh, cities like Ottawa, Calgary, Toronto, Montreal and Winnipeg all af affected by the schedule postponement. Let's bring in Emily Kaplan now, our ESPN NHL insider. So we already have so many games postponed due to COVID. Now due to an attendance restrictions, why is this happening? It's a great question. You know, I know there's a lot of people confused. Why are we proactively postponing more games that could be played? But playing nine games in empty buildings is not insignificant. I'm told that would cost tens of millions of dollars. And it's not just the owners feeling it. Remember, that money is split by hockey-related re revenue, so the players feel it too. And even with these latest postponements, tonight, Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly told me the league is still optimistic and hopeful it will be able to finish the regular season by the end of April as planned with all teams getting to 82 games. Now, what does that look like? The league, I'm told, got a draft of that new schedule today. The PA will review it tomorrow. We could see it soon. It will feature all teams getting some kind of break. It won't necessarily be one week. They won't necessarily all be at the same time. And guys, one more big thing happened today. I was told that the NHL and NHLPA have begun conversations about how to shorten the isolation time and get asymptomatic players back on the ice sooner after getting a positive test. This is in line with the new CDC recommendations. It's something the NFL figured out. It's something the NBA did as well. It gets a lot more complicated with the NHL because they have to deal with two countries. But the PA and the league are working on it to get asymptomatic players and really more players back on the ice. So bringing in Callie and Weeksy to the conversation here, obviously what Emily just said there will certainly speed up the process in terms of getting more games on the ice. But half building and the idea of economics, would the players all be in favor of this? Absolutely, they'd be in favor of it. If I was playing, I'd be in favor of it for sure. And the big reason why is, is escrow, mm -hmm. right? The big scary word everybody's scared of as a player and you gotta make the owners whole. And HRR is a big part of that. And I guarantee these players like this idea of postponing these games to make sure HRR hits a certain mark. Yeah, exactly. And listen, hockey is the golden goose for sports and entertainment in Canada. With respect to the Raptors, of course, and the Blue Jays, hockey is the lifeblood financially from a sports and entertainment perspective. And at some point, you're going to have to find a way. These players and staff have done a great job of following all the guidelines. You have to find a way to normalize and, and really get to a point to where we can live and continue to play these games. This is livelihood for so many people. 123 days until the end of the regular season as it stands right now. Some teams like the Bruins and the Islanders have 56 games left. Speaking of the Bruins, Brad Marchand blasts the NHL on Twitter as it pertains to the Olympics and NHL players' participation. A massive statement made by Brad, Marsh Brad Marchand. A lot of people wondering, Emily, my goodness, he's the voice of reason of all the players? But you seem to think perhaps that this is the elephant in the room that a lot of players were thinking about. No, I do think that Brad Marchand said out loud what I personally have heard a handful of NHL players say privately and stew over privately. And the Olympic decision just didn't sit well with them. I've heard a lot of guys say the NHL was never going to send us. We were always set up to fail. It was about money all along. You know, one of the reasons the NHL and NHLPA delayed announcing this decision, even though they had come up to it a couple days earlier, is that the PA had to call players individually and explain how it came to be. And players were upset and they were asking, what are my options? Do I have any recourse? Could I go play anyway? And the PA and their lawyers basically explained, no, this is the deal we made. We felt like it was the best deal we could make at the time with the NHL. But once the, uh, the variant hit and games got canceled, unfortunately, this is what we have to do. So there's a lot of players like Brad Marchand who are still upset. But unfortunately, they have no recourse and they just kind of have to deal with it. Or Weeksy, starting with you. Do you agree with Brad Marchand? Yeah, totally. I mean, every player that I've spoken to is really disappointed by not being able to participate and wear that jersey. Uh, Brad Marchand and others across the league feel that way without question. This might be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for some players to be able to wear that jersey, and that may have gone uh, certainly out of the window for some of those guys, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Marchand, and it's hard for me to say that. Trust me, with our history, <laughs> that I agree with the Marchand, but... <laughs> You're right, and that's the issue right now with the NHLPA, though, right, is they agreed to this, but they're worried about 400-plus players that are all in different situations, different points in their careers, going against owners who all have one thing in mind, right, putting some money in their pocket. Yeah. They want their players playing for them, not in the Olympics. So 
Uh, it's a tough situation for the PA, but I love players stepping up and, and telling us what they believe. Yeah, consider players like Steven Stamkos and Brad Marchand. This could have been their last opportunity to play in the Olympics. Braden Point, it's like he never left. Missed several games due to injury. He's back and already has two goals. Two to one. Callie and Weeksy break it down next. This first intermission report is presented by Lexus. Innovation means nothing unless it sparks something. All the way back. I mean, all. Oh. Jam's on the brakes. See you. See you later. d Matt in the corner. No rust for him whatsoever. That's called trusting your skating and your edge work, Cali. Outstanding goal by Braden Point. One of the best skaters I have ever played with, Braden Point. He showed it off there, and this one is going to the net. And Kalorn, little sauce play back door to Pointer. He puts it in his second of the night. And that's how you get back into the lineup. All right, Braden Point doing great things. It's like he never left. Second period coming right up. This has been your Lexus first intermission report. All one time now for tonight's game recap brought to you by progressive AJ Malesko. Well, game recap had a lot to do with Braden Point in the second half, but you know what? It, it, you look at the way that he played, he just didn't look like he'd missed a step. His timing was there, his speed was there, his feet were there, and there was some excitement obviously after missing 14 games. And he also found the grind too against the wall. He goes to there, he get, picks a pocket here, and then he goes to this little soft spot here all alone at the side of the net to bury his second of the game. Derek Lalonde, head coach, former SUNY Cortland goaltending legend, joins us now. Uh, coach, Braden Point back, two goals. How was he looking in practice? If it's Suzuki, you guys are going. Good. He's had some <laughs> pop. He's had some jump in his game, and it's translated. When Pointer's excited to play, uh, when he's just, he's on a whole new level, and obviously he's excited to play tonight. And then quickly, Coach, uh, four checking pressure there got you guys turnovers late in the first yeah, period. Yeah, it was the number one thing we talked about there, Booch, after the period. It's a four-checking game, and we were committed to it. We got five guys involved. We overwhelmed a little bit. That'll be our plan going forward here in a second. All right, go, Coach. Thanks, guys. Former Toledo Walleye legend, Derek Lalonde. Again, he's getting the matchups he wants, AJ, and that clearly was a point of emphasis. We could see it as the first period went along. Yeah, and you, you just heard it right there as he's giving us the time for the interview. He's also saying if Suzuki's out there, you guys are going. So there you go. he's got Braden <laughs> Point out there. He's got McDonough and, and Bogosian, so he's got his matchups. He's the... Uh, the home, the home uh, last change. So it, it is what he's trying to do, and that that turnovers that you were talking about in the offense zone, the pressure they were putting, and it comes from the defense too. That five-man unit was so effective. Here they come again. Joseph, Kalorn, turns away. Good pressure by Savard. They would like Savard and Romanov out there when points out there, not Kulak and Clegg. They were on the ice for both point goals in that first period as Lalonde getting the matchups, getting the last change. So the icing there, now he can change, Montreal can't. Yeah, you know, you talk about that defensively that he wants Savard and uh, Romanov out there, but defensively, they've got their top four guys in the COVID protocol list for Montreal, that yeah. is. So they really are struggling. They don't have the depth out there and they have to roll with it. Great experience for these guys, but what is the learning curve here? What are the growing pains going to look like? Palat's shot is blocked. And there's Roman out there. Nice tape to tape, but Hedman now has it. Throws it back in, kicked around. And Suzuki tries to go around Ruda, can't. And Gallagher will retrieve it, working on Radish. There's Hedman. Look at that play by Hedman. Just effortlessly gets that puck, gets it out, and here come the Lightning the other way. Stan Coast to the net. Has it. There's Hedman again pinching. Derek Lalonde mentioned five man four checking unit to try to create turnovers and get on the offense quickly. We saw that a lot in the first period. Here they go again in front. Ruta can't handle. Throws it in front. Oh, there was an empty net. And no Lightning player could get their stick on it. Hedman definitely takes that off the wall. Goes to Stamkos, who goes to Pallad, who dumps it in. And the bolts will change. It's like a broken record talking about a great step by Hedman, but it is, you can just see the way he's moving, the way he's reading the play using brain and feet. Yelonen to the net. Can't get that pass. Alex Belzeal, number 60, just his 11th NHL game. Shot from the point from Sammy Niku, his 64th 
NHL game. Has it again. Miku turns away. Back to the point. Shot by Evans. Blocked. Puck bounces right in front. But Raphael Harvey Pinard can't quite get it. Number 49 making his NHL debut. Canadians pressure again. Backhand blocked in front by foot. Rebound. Score! The Canadians tie it up. And guess who? Raphael Harvey Pinard. Welcome to the National Kevin Weeks. <laughs> Grab the that. puck. Yeah, right away the refs knew it. They took the puck and threw it over to the bench. There it is. First NHL game, and he gets a first NHL goal, and it's a game-tying goal, no less. So it's a big game, big goal, right after they're on their heels, and they withstand some pressure <laughs> from Tampa Bay. Look at the excitement on the bench for him, too. And you know what? They do a good job of keeping the puck in the zone. That's the biggest thing for them. They've got to own the neutral zone. They've got to own the offensive zone because they've struggled in their defensive zone. So good job by Harvey Bernard to go to the front of the net, bury it, take advantage of, of uh, some holes in the defensive zone for Tampa Bay. Oh, a dream come true for the French-Canadian kid. Seventh round draft pick, NHL debut. Gets his first tuck here in Tampa Bay, home of the two-time defending champs. And he grew up, a Montreal Canadiens fan said he didn't miss a game with his father. So it is truly a dream come true just to put this jersey on, let alone score his first goal in his first game. That gives the Canadians some life there. Paquette, the big hit. We see some good body language before the game. Some of our great... ESPN Plus shots in the tunnel near the locker room. Even after that first period, they had plenty of bounce, plenty of enthusiasm. Of course, they haven't played in a while, so it feels good to play a hockey game. Shot, say, by Legacy. Well, they haven't played in a while. They've got some energy, and they also have, you, you say, enthusiasm. Joseph in alone! Shuttles it wide. And they've got a, t a tremendous amount of youth here, and it's an opportunity. And you talk about um, whoever it may be, Harvey Pinard or Schoenemann, whoever it is playing in their first NHL game. It's a huge opportunity for them. They know it's because of COVID or, or you know, these situations they have. There's Cole Caulfield, who has spent a little bit of time down in, uh, in the AHL. And right behind him, you can see that blue Sharpie tape around the puck saying Harvey Pinard's first NHL goal. Yeah, Montreal's last game was December 16th, 12 days ago. It was a 3-2 win in front of no fans in Montreal. Four straight postponed games, so they got some pent-up energy, and they're releasing it tonight with a pretty good effort. Not a great late first period out of them, as Tampa Bay and Braden Point took a 2-1 lead, but now they're even things up at two here early in the second. Well, they had that win against Philly you're talking about on the 16th, but the seven straight losses before that. Point they... looking for his first hat trick in over three years, AJ. Dancy with heaven, delayed penalty. Legacy to the bench. Extra attacker not on yet, now on. It's Stamkos looking for a one-timer. Here's Hedman. Walks along the line, leaves for Stamkos. Delayed penalty. Point. Back to Hedman. Kind of congested. Still keeps it up, but it goes to Gallagher, and here comes the power play as we have a hooking penalty coming up on Montreal. Got some of the power play guys like Hedman. He's giving a nod to the bench. He's okay. He's good to go. Can stay out here for this first run of the power play. Montreal, minor penalty number 11, hooking. Dan O'Rourke with the call. Gallagher doesn't like it. Yeah, well, who does like a penalty against them? You can take a look at the hook right in the middle of your screen on Braden Point. Tough to slow down Braden Point. Sometimes there's not much you can do. And now we'll take a look at the power play, which is missing Kucherov, but they get Braden Point back. Mm, that's a tough call on Gallagher, but here comes the boat power play. Hedman, Palat, there's Point in the bumper. Stamkos over here looking for the one-timer. Point, shot, blocked. Again, just one career hat trick for Point. He's had a 40 goal season, a 30 goal season, two 20 goal seasons, but just the one hat. He was in Pittsburgh over three years ago. He's got two tonight. Maybe he'll get the hat trick here on the power play. Palat and Hedman. Here come the Lightning set up. Kalorn with the puck now. Here comes Kalorn. He's feeling good tonight. The hands are working. Has it down low. Looking. Can't find Point. Evans has an eye on him. Here's Hedman. Back to Palat, it's behind him, and Romanov were able to clear that easily. Well, it's a, you know, you look at the way that this, this, the unit is set up, they're changing right now, but what, one thing that makes it much better is when Victor Hedman has a shooting mentality and he's a threat from back there because he often dishes the puck. Turnover, here come the Canadians. Suzuki, 
Across to Paquette, can't get it. He's got the bit, nothing called. Play continues, power play continues. Under a minute to go for Tampa Bay. Raphael, Harvey Pinard ties it up. Miku the assist, and Corey Schooneman, first NHL point, making his NHL debut. Played four years at Western Michigan. And Schooneman's on the board in his NHL career. No share in that puck. Of course, you can't cut it in half. Goals take precedence. But still a big moment. As here comes shorthanded Montreal. Suzuki turns away, looking, fires, but it's blocked. Kulak the shot. Blocked in front. Legacy may have got a piece of that. And Tampa Bay, the power play is winding down. See if they can get one more shot with a late setup. Maroon. He now has some room. Power play ending, but they'll still have a couple more seconds because Gallagher's got to skate across the ice. Maroon fires. Tipped. Loose in front, but covered up by Sam Montembeau. No shots on goal on that power play. Uh, the first unit had some good movement around, and you can see the way Braden Point plays that bumper position. And then you get this second unit out here, which is that school bus line for Derek Lalonde there out there with the... Um, you get Corey Perry down in front of the net. That's a place there he has done some damage through his career for all the different teams that he's played on. He's pretty, pretty crafty down there, and he's got a great stick. He's sneaky, and he finds the open areas. They certainly miss Kucherov, but the power play has not been good for Tampa Bay this year. Special teams haven't been really, really elite. It's their five-on-five five play, which has been so strong. Gallagher turnover in front. Saved by Legacy. Rebound is in, but no goal. It's waved off. Interference is called. I think Tampa Bay is going to go back on the power play. Legacy was bumped. So this looks like no goal and a penalty on Montreal. Let's see. Here is the call. Goaltender. So no penalty, just the incidental contact. And so Montreal seconds away from making it three to two, but as Gallagher comes in, makes a push in a bit by Kachuk. For now, it's no goal. The call, Dave. I think it's absolutely the right call. What the referee saw there was Gallagher's stick pushing the goaltender's pad across the goal line before the puck, and then the puck trickled in afterwards. If you see right here, there's no problem with the contact with the defenseman. Gallagher's staying out of the crease, but right there, he makes contact with the pad, pushes it into the net, the puck follows afterwards. I believe the right call was made. There it is right there, and then it goes off of his body. All right, upon further review, I agree with <laughs> Dave Jackson. Got to agree with Dave Thanks, Jackson. Sean. I, th I thought Montreal got a, the, the short end of the Gallagher stick on that, but that's a great call by Dave, and Gallagher's always looking to do that. They're still going to look at it here. You know, it's interesting. It's also, it, not only does Gallagher's stick push his pad in, but he also hooks on, uh, on the goaltender's stick, which does not allow him Here's to make the, call. the save. After coach's challenge review initiated by Montreal, it was determined that there was goaltender interference. Therefore, it's no goal. Montreal has been assessed a minor penalty for play a game. So that's why I said going to break that for now, it's no goal because it was challenged by Dominic Ducharme and they agree with Dave Jackson. This is the look the NHL had right here. And it was that contact. I don't know if Gallagher had to do it, AJ. I think the puck might have gone in anyway. Yeah, except that, that you can see that if, you, if you're losing your stick right there, Legacy's stick is not in, he can't, he's not allowed to play his position, right? That's why I think it's the right call, and that's sort of what Dave Jackson was talking about, too. Goalies have to be allowed to play the puck, and his stick was all tangled up. He couldn't get there. I don't think it was a terrible challenge by the coach in that one. It was close. And they have to do that pretty quickly. And I thought at first I probably would have challenged it right off the bat until, you know, Mr. Former Referee comes in and changes my mind. Power play, Tampa Bay, they're right back on it, trying to make it 3-2. to two. Again, the power play hasn't been great this year. They certainly missed Kucherov. But now points back, and they got Stamkos, and they got Hedman at the point. Kalorn down low, and this is Palat with the puck. Here's Hedman. Fires tipped. Whacked out of midair, and out. Nice play there. 
Well, they, this top unit also got a lot of rest because of the TV timeout and then the challenge. So now they're well rested. They've got scraped dice. Really whip the puck around. All right, here's Kalorn. His hands have been working tonight, setting up people all around the ice. Goes to Hedman. Hedman fires off the post. Yo, ding dong. It comes all the way out of the zone. A hundred feet from where it hit the post, all the way to the red line. It looked like it was offside, but play continues. I think that puck moved the net. It was so hard. Point. Back behind the net. Set up again. Power play looks better now. Hedman. Boy, he wired that. Here he is again with it. Stammer! Save on the one-timer. Palat retrieves it like the pit bull he is, and it's cleared by Montreal, and they survive halfway through this penalty kill. Yeah, big shot there by Hedman, and then uh, Stamkos tried that one-timer. He's so good at that, and he's known for it. And and then uh, you look at it, he was way off angle when he tried to take that shot. Bolts back in the zone. Easy setup for them. Not much resistance for Montreal. McDonough out there with Maroon and Radish. McDonough, one-timer, never got there as Colton fired that one. He'll try to keep it in with his body. He can't, comes all the way down. And apparently it did make contact in one of the benches. In fact, faceoff will come back in the Montreal end with 24 seconds left. Here's a look at that shot we were talking about with uh, Victor Hedman. He goes on the far side and hits the far post. It was loud. Hard shot. He mentioned it in the first power play. Victor Hedman's got to have that shooting mentality. He's got a great shot. He obviously, he's got a, he's a great disher as well. But if he can be a threat up there, it's just one more prong to this attack. McDonough, power play winding down. Colton has Maroon in the bumper. Back to McDonough. Stamkos back there for the one-timer on the weak side. Shot blocked again. Bouncing towards the net. Perry tries to gun it down. Stamkos shot. Left shoulder save by Montembeau. Here's Stamkos again to Perry. Looking. Power play. Over. You can hear the smacking goalies to the leg and say, one-timer! Score! Ross Colton from Steven Stamkos. It's not a power play goal, but it's a 3-2 lead. After 131 games in the American League, slowly brought up to Tampa Bay. And now here he is, game 61 of his NHL career. He's really establishing himself as Montreal is going to go back on the power play after this upcoming tripping penalty on Tampa Bay. Here's Caulfield. Montembeau can go to the bench if he wants. Maybe he doesn't see the arm in the air yet. Well, he's just going to make sure there's not a deflection or anything that ends up in his own net. It's been that kind of night at times for Montreal. But here they go. Extra attacker now on. He'll try to tie the game right here. Back to the point. It comes Clay. Wrist shot. Tipped in front. Saved by Legacy. Another shot. Caulfield whacks at it. And finally, Tampa Bay with possession. So Montreal, before the power play begins, has a couple of chances as Riley Nash will head to the sin bin. Tampa Bay, minor penalty, number 20, tripping. There's Riley Nash in the corner. You can see he's battling two players and he gets his stick tied up with Kulak and right in front of the ref, not much you can do about that. And now for, for Montreal, they did a good job just in that extra attacker right there, getting the puck quickly through the neutral zone down. They got a couple opportunities. Let's see if they can carry some of that confidence, some of that momentum into this man advantage. Four forwards and Sammy Niku, the defenseman with the puck in his 64th NHL game, out there to begin the power play for Montreal. Caulfield will set up for the one-timer position, much like Stamkos does for Tampa Bay. Suzuki, of course, is out there, and he has the puck. He's their playmaker. Gallagher will try to work things in and get to the front, but he can't. Watch out. Matthew Joseph's got wheels. He's got Kalorn with him. Joseph. Oh, he had Kalorn on the spin around the backhand pass, but he fanned on it. Good job by Cole Caulfield to back check and take the puck from Joseph. And now here comes Montreal. 
Suzuki. Runs it around. Radish can't get it. There's Caulfield with it. Caulfield. Back to the point it comes to Sammy Niku with the puck. Here's Gallagher. Far from the net. He wants to be close to it. Throws it back to Niku. Caulfield set up. One-timer! Saved by Legacy on the blocker. He read that nicely and really made that look rather routine off the Cole Caulfield one-timer. Well, Montreal doesn't keep the zone on the first uh, first face-off, and they end up having a tough time with the zone entry, and they are, are put on their heels with Matthew Joseph's speed. He comes down, he tries to do it behind the back. He sort of misfires, it rolls off the heel, but he had Alex Kalorn all alone. You know, one of the risks, you've got four forwards and one defender out there, but you got Cole Caulfield, who did an excellent job of getting, he was the first guy back uh, ahead of Niku, and he was, did a good job picking up. It ended up being a two-on-two -two because of Cole. Cole Caulfield's hustle. You mentioned Montreal, the worst power play in the NHL. Yeah, they've struggled, and some of it is right there. They lose faceoffs, they got to go the length of the ice, and they really have a tough time with their zone entries, just getting set up. Got no production from their defensemen. They're a team that obviously lacks big time centermen. That's what they're going to be looking for. Kalorn to make it 4 to 2. No! Save by Montembo. Alex Kalorn's had a great night tonight. Almost yeah. tucked that one in. He has it right in front of me. He gets great stick position, one hand on a stick in the passing lane, and he picks it off. Evans, it around. stick check there, and that's an easy clear for Ruda. The thing you watch the penalty kill for Tampa Bay. They do an excellent job of when they're under pressure, they ice it, and they get the change, especially here in the second period with this long change. But they also recognize when they have time to kill the clock or go on the offense, even on the penalty kill. Nadimo, Bazile out there. Oh, there's another Tampa Bay steal, and that's going to do it. On the power play, another kill for the Lightning against Montreal. Struggling power play, had one shot on goal on that one. Under nine to go here in the second period. Back to even strength. Lucas Datamo has scored tonight, number 42 in white. Savard throws it down to Raphael Harvey Pinard, who got his first NHL goal, his first NHL game. Shot, legacy. Makes a nice save on Michael Pizzetta. Here's the opportunity. You can see Alex Klorn one-handed stick in position, and he goes down. He can't quite bury it, but still up by one. Time now for the SAP Coaching Insight app, and AJ, sometimes coaches have to make decisions of how and when to play young players. Yeah, and you look at these two guys, NHL debut, we got to see them do their rookie lap together, solo lap, but yeah. in, in pair, and Harvey Pinard with the goal, and uh, Schoenemann with the assist. Uh, you know, we got to hear from both of them in the media availability, and they were both super excited, and also just said they knew this day would come. It wasn't just about COVID, it was, it, now that's their opportunity, but they were gonna make the most of it if they could. John Butchergrass, A.J. Malesko, Tampa Bay leads 3-2 as Joseph brings it in. Knocked down nicely there by Corey Schooneman. Well, as we mentioned, the show you got his first NHL point tonight. Played four years at Western Michigan. Now he's in the show. Schooneman was asked, actually, is it, does he keep up with all the players in the AHL, his teammates from the AHL now that he's in the show? And he said, well, it's pretty easy. Most of them are here with me. <laughs> Shot! Legacy. The glove save. And scoring goals for this Montreal team certainly has been a problem. As we mentioned, sixth lowest in franchise history goals per game. They're one of three teams in the NHL without a 10-goal score. The two others are Arizona and New Jersey. So Dominic Ducharme, tough situation for him, AJ. The front office is changing. I'm sure he's wondering about his future. Yeah, you know, it's it's really tough when you get that. You get this the way this is going, especially coming off the heels of the surprise run to the Stanley Cup final, losing to this, these Tampa Bay Lightning, and then what, you know, what, Nobody expected this, right? Maybe there was a question whether they're going to make the playoffs or not, but not start this slow and have this much trouble on offense. Of course, they've had some injuries, and, and certainly they've been hit with the COVID harder, uh, the COVID bug harder than maybe the Tampa Bay Lightning here. But some of these teams have really been hit hard with these protocols. And at times, chirped by some of his players in the media. Uh, certainly not going to make Dominic Ducharme feel any better. Penalty coming up. It's going to be a slashing penalty. A stick went flying across the ice. And looks like a 
power plays coming up for Montreal again. Here's the call. Tampa Bay, minor penalty number 13. Shooting the stick. Boris Kachuk doesn't like it. It's just his 22nd NHL game. AJ, and perhaps he uh, doesn't realize that this is uh, not allowed. Yeah, and, and there's the stick. The stick he, goes. It, it, what he does is he, he gets it out of the way right here. It's it's he gets it. Try to pass it back to his teammate. That's not allowed. That's not allowed, and uh, interference or what? Passing the uh, hitting the stick. But regardless, Tampa Bay has to kill another penalty, and they don't. You mentioned before their special teams has not been where it ha where they have been in the past, but they look pretty good today. They definitely have some confidence even when they're on the uh, penalty kill. Miku back out there. Here's Suzuki. Shot tipped. Nice save by Legacy. Cole Caulfield on the weak side, setting up for the one-timer. Can't keep it. Watch out. Here comes Kalorin. He's flying down the ice. We're trying to make it 4-2 again. No! He's denied again. Cole Caulfield brings it out. Montembeau with a couple of breakaway saves against Alex Kalorin with his right pad. Kalorin is fast tonight you can see he's feeling it got great hands taking advantage as much as he can yeah the holiday break certainly has resulted in a lot of good skating here tonight canadians remember back on the power play trying to tie the game here in the second miku is still out there suzuki trying to throw to cost good play by mcdonough alex belzeal number 60s in the bumper suzuki throws it behind the net suzuki has Caulfield if he wants him. Can't find him. Weak side. Back to Niku. 64th NHL game. Suzuki walking in. Instead, he'll drop it back to Juan, who throws it across. But Niku keeps it in. Caulfield trying to win a one on three battle. He does. Look at those hands. Caulfield towards the net, but blocked by Nash. And he will clear. Look at the way that Montreal's playing. They had some good opportunity. A little bit of urgency right there. They had a stretch where they went. Uh, they. Got some uh, possession, but really they're misfiring on their passes. They're yeah. just off a little bit, and they're rolling along the boards. It's taking that extra half second to try to collect the puck, get their head up, and by then, Tampa Bay has adjusted. It's an odd decision by Suzuki, too. He was in a position to attack there, and he kind of turned away and kind of threw a nothing drop pass. Well, that's that it. When you've got a power play like this that's struggling, you've got to simplify as yeah. much as you can. You funnel pucks forward, diagonal, to the net. They're 0 for 10 on the power play in their last six games now. Kachuk out of the box. Spinorama backhand and a kick save by Matembo. Edmund tries to keep it in. Glove by Pizzetta. Taken by Kalorn. Back comes the Canadians and Jake Evans. Edmund swacks out of the way, but he'll let Legacy play it. And now look up. Go to his D partner, Ruda. Down the ice, tip by Kachuk, hit from behind, no arms in the air. Play continues. Kachuk is down, trying to get off the ice. He's having a hard time. His leg is compromised here. Now play stops, crowd boos. Kachuk on his feet. He'll go get his stick and then work his way to the bench. Stunned a bit, but for now, looks like he's okay. Nods his head, yep. And he'll go sit on the bench and try to shake this off. Explanation is Derek Lalon looks on. Hedman's getting an explanation right now from referee Dan O'Rourke at center ice. A little bit of a push there. But for now, Kachuk is okay. Easy for me to say, I'm wearing makeup. Tampa Bay 3, Montreal 2, 5-13 left in the second. Winter Classic Saturday on TNT. ESPN Plus doubleheader next Tuesday. TNT again the following week in Pittsburgh against the Blues. Let's bring in rules analyst Dave Jackson. Dave, what boarding is this boarding on Boris Kachuk? Well, boarding is projecting your opponent violently into the boards. In this case, there's no maliciousness here. It's a hockey play kind of gone bad. Okay. He's just trying to make contact with them. Player kind of toe picks a little bit, ends up into the boards. I'm okay with no call there and from a different sight line if the referee calls two for boarding I can live with that as well. It's just a judgment call. Gotcha. Gotcha 
Dave and I are seeing eye to eye tonight. <laughs> I think this relationship's really starting to grow. A bit contentious early on. Here comes Point, looking for his first hat trick in three years. Point, no, oh, it's off the post. Second post for Tampa Bay as Point inches away from his second career hat trick. High sticking penalty coming up on Montreal. Back on the power play will go Tampa Bay. Checking for blood there, seeing if it's going to be two or four. Four. Be two. Oh, I guess he saw something. He did. Canadians, number 55 has four minutes high sticking. Dean Morton with the emphatic call on Michael Pozzetta as our boy making his NHL debut. Sean Day getting some stitch work. Yeah, I take a look and you've got this good transition here. Stamkos gets on side for Braden Point to come and show his speed, his quickness, moves his feet the whole time, which makes the shot deceptive, but ultimately hits the post. And then Pozzetta right there. Oh, man. Ah, that hurts. Sean Day shaking it off, but he got his team a four-minute power play. Let's see if Tampa Bay can get this power play cooking out. Looked pretty good tonight, just haven't quite finished. Points out there looking for the hat trick. They bring it down and go behind him, and it's a Kalorn, whose hands are really working tonight. Seeing the play, looking to make plays. Palat, back to Hedman, who's hit the post tonight. Points got room, but it'll go to Hedman. Hedman walking, and here comes Point. Down below the Palat. Savard pushes Kalorn out from the top of the crease. One-timer stand. Short side wide, it goes into the netting, but the faceoff will stay in the Montreal end. That shot was tipped by Montreal into the netting. You know, we've talked about Brayden Point coming back, and he plays that bumper spot, the middle of the diamond of this 1-3-1, and he plays it a little bit differently. You watch the way Patrice Bergeron or TJ Oshie, two of the best in the game, the way they play in that bumper spot. Brayden Point is much more active. You can see he comes up high sometimes. He's right there looking. For, uh, for shooting or passing, but when he does find the opening, he'll come up even with Victor Hedman out on the blue line. Hedman on the blue line now with the puck. Wrist shot! Just high and wide with Kalorin providing the screen. Jake Evans, real nice play there to get in front of points and then clear the puck. Nice play by the Notre Dame grad, number 71. So again, this was a four-minute high-sticking penalty, so there's still plenty of time, over three minutes left on this Tampa Bay power play, trying to get that two-goal lead. They score in the first two minutes. They get another, that the second two minutes to work with on the power play as well. Evans, one-on-one -on -one with Hedman. He's got Savard late. Gets it to Savard, but good stick work by Kalorn. Tipped in front. Excellent. Tip by Savard. Almost got the shorthanded goal. My guess is that would have been the first of his career. Let's look it up. David Savard and shorthanded goals don't quite go together. <laughs> he was getting a little heated in the last power play situation that they had, screaming at his old teammates here across the way. Hedman's been out there the whole time. Now he'll go to the bench. Radish is out there. He'll rim it around, and McDonough's going to be able to keep it in. Ryan McDonough drops it back nicely, but too far for Radish. Ryan McDonough. Corey Perry. There's some more metal. Puck is loose in front. Whacking, whacking, whacking. Colton with it. Back to McDonough. McDonough. Waits. Breaks some ankles. To Radish. Back to McDonough. One timer. Side of the net. Colton's already scored from that position in this game. Radish again. Colton still set up for the one timer. McDonough. Radish. Spins away, down low, Perry goes back to McDonough. Colton's open, this time he doesn't shoot, walks over, pass, oh, Perry had the tap in. A little bit in his feet, McDonough, wrist shot. Matimbo presses against his right peck to stop the action. It's showtime, and the NHL All-Star fan vote lets you choose the captains. Vote today and decide which NHL stars will take center stage in Las Vegas. Vote on the NHL app or NHL.com slash vote. There's Savard right there with Ramon Off. Yes, that would have been David Savard's first shorthanded goal in 642 NHL games. Corey Perry chirping. That's when hockey gets good.
When 10 starts to chirp, it's going to get fun. Read lips, people. Well, yeah, you got Patrick Paquette actually telling him, I can't hear you. I can't understand you. So maybe he's trying to read lips, too. Matimbo with another save. 22 shots for Tampa Bay, 19 for Montreal. Power play suddenly with just 75 seconds left. Here's Palat. First unit back out there for Tampa Bay to finish the job here. Kalorin walks, walks, shots, blocked. Puck goes high in the air, stuck down, no high sticking. Jake Evans been really good on this PK, number 71 in red, white, and blue. Under a minute to go now in the four minute high sticking penalty. Point. Two goals so far to Stamkos, walking in, pass across, side of the net. Matembo was there with the pad. Palat tried to one time it in. Stammer can't quite dial that one in. Headman one timer just wide. Puck in front. Backhanded out. Headman skate. Point. Blocker saved by Matembo. Oh, Braden Point eyes to the ceiling. He is just looking for that hat trick, that second of the career, as you mentioned. He's had his chances. This whole team has had their chances. They're pounding the post down at this end. We can hear it. Good puck movement, Braden Point we talked about. Look at that stick save too. Look at that reaction, eyes up. A little bit of frustration, but a little bit of smile too. He knows he's getting his chances, he's doing the right stuff. And talk about that bumper spot, he's so good there, the way that he can read when to bump the puck and when to take the shot himself. Seven shots on goal on this power play so far. Looking for number eight. Stamkos, there it is. Glove save by Montembeau. Didn't snare it, but he blocked it with that catching glove. Yeah, it like he fought it off a little with that, the way that his catching glove came around. It went off maybe his shoulder. Shots on goal were 19 apiece when the power play began. Now it's 27-19. Under a minute to go here in the second. Still a one-goal game. 3-2. Stamkos. Oh, we had Maroon in the slot. Couldn't quite connect. The puck's going to come out. Penalty over. Montreal, good job killing the four-minute penalty. And Tampa Bay's power play struggles continue. It's looked good tonight, but they just haven't quite finished. Maroon, a little wrestling match. Down the other, a little bit of a kick from Maroon now. Play is going to continue while well, these two players wrestle. Finally, we have a whistle. <laughs> As it was Alex Romanov and Pat Maroon tangled up there in some sort of a wrestling maneuver. I, I think, yeah, Romanov, Romanov looks like he got stuck, but maybe he was just hanging on to his leg. But it was actually a great step by Romanov right there at the blue line on Pat Maroon. And then they get tangled up. You can see Romanov not letting go, with his, trying to uproot Pat Maroon, who's a big, heavy guy. Wasn't going down easily. I don't, I don't think he's stuck. I think he's just hanging on. Yeah, he's, uh, I'm going to stay down here. Yeah, but, but it was a it was a good hockey play. Pat Maroon had a had a leading pass. His eyes were back as he was looking for that pass coming off, and Romanov stepped right up at that blue line. I talked about that a little bit in the first period that that's what Montreal needs to do: prevent easy zone entry from these speedy Tampa Bay uh, Lightning forwards. Just because once they get in their D zone, they're in, they're really having a tough time. They're on their heels and and tough turnovers. Kachuk and Pizzetta were having a conversation. 55 in white, 13 in blue. Keep an eye on that. Here comes Suzuki. Knocked down. Penalty coming up on Fortier. So Montreal will spend the last 10.8 on the power play. And if they don't score, the first 150 of the third. Second penalty of the game for Fortier. Tampa Bay, minor penalty, 82, dripping. Active whistles tonight. And here's a look. Suzuki's got the puck coming through the neutral zone. And yes, he, yep. you know, 48 goes for the poke. He misses and he hits the skate and trips him up. No doubt. No doubt. Like that, that could result in a turnover, go the other way. So you got to call it. So Fortier, just his uh, ninth NHL game. He's played eight so far this year. One goal, one assist, the second rounder. So he's in the box. 82. And Montreal again will try to get a face-off win here, get a quick one on goal. Try to tie this thing up as we're about to head to the second intermission. Suzuki doesn't win the face off. 50-50 actually. And now back to the point it comes. Clay, Suzuki, got to shoot that. Now he does. High and wide is going to come out of the zone and end the second period. That's the end of the second.
Tampa Bay leads 3-2. Now back to the studio, Arda Ocal. Thank you, Blue Chiefs. And Ryan Callahan with the Discover Intermission Report. Thank you, uh, Blue Chief. Coming up on the Discover Second Intermission Report, we break down a fun second period. Weeksy and Cali give you their top five teams in the East. Where does Tampa land, I ponder? Rafael Harvey Pinard first NHL game gets the rookie lap and he gets his first NHL goal the Habs seventh rounder in 2019 he spoke with Bucci after scoring this goal joined now by Rafael Harvey Pinard Rafael congratulations your first NHL goal what did it feel like uh, it feels it feels great for sure uh, it's a it's a, an amazing uh, feeling uh, and uh, after the first goal I, I want to get my first win as a Habs Mm. And uh, what was life like growing up for you, watching Montreal, rooting for Montreal? Give us a Montreal uh, childhood story of yours. Yeah, I was a, a big fan of the Montreal Canadiens. I was watching every single game with, uh, with my father. So uh, wearing this jersey for me so tonight, it's special, and uh, I'm really proud of it. You should be, Raphael. Great job. Congratulations. Good luck in the third period. Thank you. All right, thanks for sticking with us here. Studio F, Bristol, Connecticut, Ryan Callahan, Kevin Weeks. Ardo Cal, very fun second period. We heard that Iron, your best friend, attendee's <laughs> best friend, a lot, but we didn't hear it uh, on a beautiful setup on the power play by Steven Stamkos, your old teammate. It was. Uh, this power play has always been click clicking. It's a little bit slow this year, obviously missing point, missing Kucherov for an extended period of time, but having point back in that little bumper roll obviously helps. But on this here, it all starts with Corey Perry, a little interchange here with Steven Stamkos, and Stammer looks like he's going to go to the point, and when he does that, that draws that top forward out has to respect that shot coming as that forward draws out. That seam opens. Colton backside off the stick in the back of the net. And uh, having those two guys back on the power play once Cooch does get back, it's going to help a ton. I love that deception too because if you're Montreal, you're expecting Stamkos to maybe even shoot that himself. Yep. As he looks off, freezes that defender up top, as you mentioned, and then that little KG seam pass back door. <laughs> nice. Steven Stamkos has 11 power play points on the season. How about Sam Motombo, though? Uh, you and him have something in common. Both drafted by the Panthers into the show. He's having a game. He's having a game. He was an AHL All-Star. Roberto Luongo's brother, Leo Luongo, did a good job with him with Florida's AHL team. And he's having himself a game. He's made some timely saves. He's made some big saves, some breakaways. They're getting out shot handily. And why not have yourself a game against the defending repeat Stanley Cup champs, I should say. Nice stop there on Alice Kalorn. No big deal. Montembeau squares up. And beautiful backhand. Excellent pad save there by Montembeau. Not to be outdone. Here's another look. Reads it like a book. Nice save there, Callie. Yeah, Killer, why don't you go to a different move there? Backhand, forehand, <laughs> two in a row. Mix it up, Killer. Come on. No kidding. By the way, Montembeau had 33 games with the Panthers, eight with the Habs this season. He was a 77th overall pick in 2015. And uh, he seems to be keeping his team in this one are the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, you guys had some picks, your top five picks in the Eastern Conference. Speaking of Eastern Conference teams, we're going to show you that after the break. Our Discover Second Intermission report will continue. The boys will tell you yes. exactly how they rank them. And here's Pinard's goal, first NHL goal, save the puck. Welcome to the National as well. This Second Intermission report is presented by Discover. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. Here is your top teams in the Eastern Conference. According to points, Lightning, Hurricanes, Capitals, Maple Leafs, Rangers, Panthers leading the way. But we love lists here on ESPN+. Plus. So, Callie and Weeksy, give us your personal top fives. All right, thanks so much, Arda. I'm here with Callie. We're going to give you our top five teams in the Eastern Conference. Callie, we had a walkthrough. This is game time now. Who's your number five? My number five is the Washington Capitals. A lot of question marks coming into this, into this season. Maybe a bubble team, but I like the way they're playing. And Ovi is on a mission right now. All right, I like it. I am going to go with the Pittsburgh Penguins. The fact that they played this well in spite of the injuries to Sidney Crosby and Malkin and others in their lineup. And Tristan Jari, he's been money this year. Who do you got it for? He has. I'm going to go with the team up north, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Ah. And right now, for me, everything is going smooth for them. But yeah. let's see round one, as we all know. See how the playoffs go for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's a TBD. <laughs> That's a TBD. Okay, you're going to rock with the Leafs. I am going to go with the Washington Capitals. You talked about Ovi being on a mission. He's been outstanding this year. But how about Kuzi? Kuzi's been unreal. He's back. He's back in D.C. All right, who do you have at three? Number three, I am going to go with 
the Carolina Hurricanes. This is a team that's been knocking on the door. You say you got to lose before you can win. Mm. This team has had a couple deep runs. Love their coach. Love their systems. Big fans of the Carolina Hurricanes. All right. I am going to go with my original team, the team that drafted me down to South Florida, the Florida Panthers. What a year it's been for them. They're closing the gap on those Tampa Bay Lightning. I think they're an elite team. They've been besieged by injuries, but all in all, I love their squad. A lot of depth, and they can play it any way you want it. Who do you have at two? Number two, your original team, the Florida Panthers, and a lot of the reasons you say, but number one reason is they took Tampa to seven last year without Ekblad, their number one defenseman. So he's in the lineup. Who knows how that series goes? All right, all right, all right. Now, at number two, my man Rod Brindamore, coach of the year, for great reason. He's been amazing. The job he's done transforming that culture. That team plays hard. They play consistent. You know what you're getting from them game to game. All right, here's the big one, Callie. Drum roll, what do you got? I don't think it's a big surprise to anybody right now. The top team in the NHL currently, my old team, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're going for the three-peat. Got point back, got Kucherov back, Stammers uh, going, got Vassy in net. Yes. Team to go through. All right, all right. Okay, at number one, I'm with you. I'm going with the TBL as well. Repeat Stanley Cup champs. They call it Tampa Bay, but before that, they now call it Champa Bay. <laughs> I'm still with Stampa Bay because Steven Stamkos and them have won two straight. They might win a third. Arda, back to you. Thank you very much. Some very sad news to report. Broadcasting legend in the NFL and Hall of Fame coach John Madden has passed away at the age of 85. John Madden uh, died unexpectedly on Tuesday morning, as announced by the NFL. Madden won a Super Bowl as Raiders coach in 1977. He joined the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2006. He became the voice of generations as an NFL analyst in the annual NFL video game bears his name. Truly iconic indeed. Third period after the break. In the wonderful city of Tampa, Florida. Reminder, Montreal begins the third period on the power play. 27 shots on goal for Tampa Bay. 13 in even strength. 14 on special teams. 11 on the power play. And three shorthanded shot attempts. They begin the final frame up by one. With A.J. Malesko, I'm John Butchergrass. The shoes should have been on TV. All right, A.J., power play for Montreal to begin this frame on a fresh sheet of ice. How important is that? It's really important for them. And again, you mentioned it, fresh sheet of ice. It's going to be clean. They've got to move the puck around. They've got to get possession right off of this first uh, this first opening draw. Uh, but really, this whole, through two games, they've had a great effort from Sam Montembeau. A couple breakaway, two breakaway saves on Alex Killorn. You heard the guys talk about it in the studio. He's gotten a little bit of help from his posts as well, but he's yeah. made 24 saves. And some of them of this variety, where they're in close, they're in tight. And you just look at people like Braden Point looking for that hat trick, but they're such dynamic scorers. Sam Montembeau has had to be huge, and he's come up with some big saves. Yeah, Tampa Bay has hit three posts in this game. So between those three posts and his amazing athleticism, uh, could be a 10 spot for Tampa Bay tonight if they finish all of their chances. But Montreal is still in it. They're down 3-2 to two here, and now they have a power play to begin the final frame. Well, and they've been outshot 27-19, but it was a lot closer than that until the last couple minutes of the second period. So they were getting their chances, not as many in tight as Tampa Bay. But this is a big chance for them. They're down by a goal, as you mentioned. Power play to start early. They've had a tough luck on their power play. They, they To me, their passes are a little bit off. They're not stick to stick. They've got to be crisp. They've got to be much more precise. Tampa Bay had eight shots on goal on their four minute power play. Otherwise, it's been pretty even. Both goalies have made really good saves. Montumbo's had to make a few more grade A saves, and he's done it. Tampa Bay, easy clear. Well, tough turnover right there. You look at Cole Caulfield, he just blindly, a backhand off that bumper spot, threw it right to the middle where there was a Tampa Bay Lightning player to send it to length of the ice. Thanks for subscribing to ESPN Plus. Jack Eichel's out there watching. Thanks, Jack. John Butchergrass, AJ Malesko here in Tampa Bay. After six days, the NHL is back. Tampa Bay and Montreal. Montreal trying to tie the game. Clay off the shin guard of Killorn, who has been a monster tonight. Going to chase this one down. Looking for a trailer. We'll take it around the net. Go for a stroll. Stop. He's out man. So he'll just try to eat up some time. And now the Canadians bring it back out. Less than 30 to go on the power play. Edmund effortlessly skating tonight. Really in control of his game. He's right back in that Norris Trophy conversation, AJ. I think he heard all that young defenseman talk. You know, McAvoy and Kale McCarr and, of course, Adam Fox. And I 
Hedman's like, don't forget about me, yo. Don't forget about me. And I think Roman Yossi probably feeling the same way down in Nashville. Good call. But, you know, you've you got these guys. And Hedman, obviously, as I mentioned in the first period, he struggled with that knee injury. And you can see he gets a, he can be a little loose with his game, and he can get away with it because of the scoring his team has and the goalies they have. But you can see this year he is dialed in. Yeah. Career high points per game this year for Hedman or in the early going. There's Sean Day making his NHL debut, number 74, getting some ice time there now as we are back at even strength. As Tampa Bay looks to protect this third period lead. They've played very well of late. They've won eight of their last nine. Point comes back tonight to get two goals, and that is the difference in the game. The Lightning have three games in the next four days. Back-to-back -back Thursday and Friday at Panthers Thursday, then back here home against the Rangers. No shots on goal on that power play by Montreal. Don't forget ESPN Plus tonight, Arizona and San Jose coming up at 10.30 Eastern time. Also Vegas and L.A. later tonight. Three games in all as the NHL tries to get their season back on track, avoid those canceled games and get some momentum, A.J., as we head towards the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's a tough thing, right? We're going through this. They want to keep everybody safe at the at most importantly, but they're also trying to get this season and try to figure out wh what is what are the safety precautions? What are the COVID protocols? We saw the changes have gone down from a 10-day quarantine with the CDC to a five-day quarantine just recently. There's push now to have asymptomatic players be able to return to play uh, quicker than they've been able to. So it's, it's an ever-evolving moving target. Now, obviously, it's frustrated for some of these NHL players who are used to playing with the flu and with bad colds. And most NHL seasons, kind of part of the deal, and it'll often go through the room. We saw it go through the room in Dallas. It wasn't COVID. Those guys still had to go out and play. Suzuki, one timer. Not much on that one. Yeah, Jonathan Durant. Back to 2002, the night before the gold medal game. Half my team was on IVs to hydrate with the flu. So wow. that, you know, we've we've had stuff like that. players have to go through that. You fight through it. You want to play. I heard the guys talking about that in the studio too. Corn point for the hat trick just wide. Perry rebound save again by Montembeau. Montembeau dialed in. Point 360 to Kalorn. Off the bench is Joseph joining his line mates. Joseph down deep. Watch by Clay. He'll come to Ruda around the point. Ruda, Kalorn. Kalorn's really been magnificent tonight. Seems like the game is going slow motion for him. Turnover. Cole Caulfield. Going to get chased down by Hedman, though. Stops on the dime. Paling. Back to Paling. Tipped and saved by Legacy. Good action there by Montreal. Off the play by Caulfield. Broke in alone. Saw he was going to be caught. So he stopped on a dime, AJ. And they almost had something going there with Paling. Well, interesting, you know, uncharacteristic turnover by Victor Hedman. But watch him get back. Woo. Both these guys get on their horse and get back. Victor Hedman covers a ton of ice. Good awareness there. Look at that slamming stick by Victor Hedman. He's frustrated. He knows he made a mistake. He made it better. He went back and helped out, got bailed out by his goalie as well. But good awareness there by Cole Caulfield. He's getting squeezed off by two veteran defenders. And you mentioned he stopped, created something out of, some, out of something that might have been nothing. That was a sweet play. And Schooneman, who has the puck now, made that pass across to Paley. Bumper shot saved by Legacy as Jake Evans had a golden opportunity between the hash marks to tie the game. Oh, wow, Jake Evans, that was a quick shot. It was right in his wheelhouse. And that's something I was talking about, their passes on the power play being a little bit off, not as precise as they need to be. That one was right on the money to Jake Evans. Keep an eye on him on the left side of your screen. He opens up and he backs up and creates a little bit of space and that from, uh, from Radish right there, and that allows him that opportunity to take that one-timer. Sammy Niku with a nice setup. Niku remains out there. Evans going to rim it around the other side. He knows that Corey Schooneman is there. Schooneman back behind the net. Alex Bazil out there. Bazil gets it back. Number 60. Evans wraparound attempt saved by Legacy. So some good pressure here by Montreal. And Legacy hasn't been all that busy with with these in tight chances and now this last little push here he's had to be very active and he's had to be pretty aware and he's done a good job leaving no second chance opportunities no rebound and you can see in here their eye it, heads on a swivel there for Belzeal looking up trying to find Jake Evans who wraps it around and like I say says nope 
Three shots on goal in the last 30 seconds. That was a good job by that line. Now the Suzuki line will try to keep the pressure going. He's waved out against Braden Point. In comes Jonathan Duran. He's got a good set of hands. He could win this back to Romanov. Gallagher tips it back. Romanov around the net slowly. Suzuki has it. Trying to deal with McDonough. Bogosian will take it. Tampa Bay will look to clear. They can't. Pressure continues. Suzuki with it. Bump by McDonough. And now Kalorn has it as point. Can't get it out. Turnover. Now the lightning come out. Here comes Kalorn. He's got point. Point enters the zone. Drop pass. Bogosian. Bogosian's got a man in front. It was Joseph. He couldn't quite get it to him on the slap pass attempt. And Druan is back. Suzuki. Shot! Glove save and a beauty from Max Legacy. Kita Kucherov. Dives into that pile. Learn from Pasta. Three two Tampa Bay. Cedric Paquette against Riley Nash. 50-50 face-off. Battle continues. Montreal has it. They've got a little momentum right now. Shot to the net. Never got to Legacy. Can't find it. Comes to Clegg, the defenseman in. Watch by Nash. Pass in front. Doesn't quite get there. Now Nash has it. Fourth line center. Looks to get it out. But boy, Montreal continues the pressure. Tampa Bay hemmed in their own end as Kachuk will try now. Still can't get it out. And the puck goes into the Tampa Bay bench. A great forechecking by this fourth line. Was that a forget? Benimo, they, they really were kept the pressure on and they got some help too from their defenders doing a little bit of what Tampa Bay, what we saw through that first period with their deep pinching down and making sure they have that high support from their forwards. Now you get this line coming out, uh, paling Harvey Pinard and Cole Caulfield, see if they can take advantage of some of this pressure, some of the momentum. Face off to the left of Legacy. And Derek Lalong in for John Cooper behind the bench. Lalong was behind the bench when they won in Vegas. Then their next game in Arizona was postponed. So this is game two. And finally, Tampa gets it out. Here comes Colton. A little late developing three on two. Colton's got good wheels. Takes it around the net, looking for Perry in front. Now he'll shoot it off the back of Kulak. And Montreal will get it out. Down by one, looking for the tying goal here in the third period. Good passing, Clegg, fire, score! Career goal number one for Kale Clegg in his 39th NHL game. And Montreal has two players tonight with their first career tucks. Welcome to the national, Kale Clegg. Well, this opportunity was created in the D zone, and Cole Caulfield actually stretches the zone. Victor Hedman jumps up. He thought there was an opportunity from Colton, and Cole Caulfield's off to the left of your screen, and what that does is that opens up the neutral zone, allows an easy zone entry, and then Cole Caulfield's there in support, and a good quick pass across to Kale Clegg, the following defender. It's Paling here who gets this space, gives it to Cole Caulfield, and then Clay comes in as the trailing defender and buries his first goal of his NHL career. Got to feel good. Oh, absolutely. Some frustration here to my right from Corey Perry, but you know, you just look at the way that that goal, it, it, it started with, a, with Colton in an opportunity, and then Cole Caulfield recognizes there's a little bit of a hole. He stretches the whole ice and then opens it up. So we are all tied here in the third period. Montreal with a gritty, gutty effort. They've really turned on the momentum here. We could see it coming with shift after shift. The pressure continued. And now they've tied the game. Tampa Bay, once again, will look to come back. Evans working on Ruta. Good play by Ruta to deny him. Now Tampa Bay has to, some way, AJ, find the momentum back in this one. But right now, Kale Clegg with his first NHL goal, ESPN Hockey Night, presented by New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka of the NHL. Drink 
responsibly. There's another puck to mark up Tampa Bay. You know, your respective country's jersey in a best on best event. There's there's really no feeling like that. Uh, you grow up representing your country at, at the Olympics and winning a gold medal. And that's something that, uh, you know, probably won't have a, a chance to do now. We'll see. Again, just turns 32 in February, AJ. Keep yourself in good shape. Stay healthy. He could come back in four years to, with the way he shoots the puck. There's a role for him. Uh, yeah, there, there absolutely is. You just look at, you know, Team Canada has so much depth. There are so many people yeah. that, that so much can happen in four years. So it is interesting it, just looking at that decision made, uh, made by the NHL and the NHLPA. And you look at zero Olympic medals by these players, these teams. I mean, it's crazy when you think of Ovechkin, Malka, Yossi, Marshan, Samkos, and Hedman. You know, those bottom three zero Olympic uh, appearances. Hedman was one of the first three named to Team Sweden back when they were uh, scheduled to go. So, you know, it is. He did say that they're going to go for a third straight Stanley Cup, and that may alleviate some of the sting. Montreal's outshot Tampa Bay 8-1 to one this period. They've owned it, and they've tied the game 3-3. I think that's why we heard Brad Marchand really, really aggressively voicing his protest today on Twitter about the NHL not going to the Olympics, much like Stamkos. This is probably his last chance. You want to add that to your career resume, don't you, AJ? You have an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. And you know what it's like. That's forever. It is forever. And, you know, I mean, these guys, obviously, you can sit here and say that they're they're competing. They're being paid handsomely to play this awesome game and compete for a Stanley Cup. But there is something so unique and special about putting on your country's jersey that these guys that it is too bad they deserve it and they deserve a chance to do that I also understand the business side of it I understand what the NHL and the NHLPA is trying to do it's a, really a no-win situation there's no easy answer in this situation but you look at Tampa Bay I mean there are 11 of these guys that arguably could be on their country's roster and then you got Coop who's going to be with Team Canada so there's a lot of heartbreak for players across the league Tampa Bay needs to turn the tide here, tilt this ice, and start getting some shots on goal. They've been very quiet. Has not been a good third period for Tampa Bay. 19,092 on hand, 16th sellout, and 16 home games this season. This has turned into a great hockey town. Called a frozen four here a few years back with North Dakota winning the national championship. It'll be back here for another frozen four in a couple of years. Boston this year in April. Uh, just a fun place to watch hockey. Great atmosphere outside the arena. Of course, the beauty of the water. Jeffrey Vinnick, the owner, has done an unbelievable job here. It's a Class A organization. The last two Stanley Cups won by them, and they certainly have enough to win three in a row. But right now, it's 3-3. Three, three. Uh, you know, and, and Mon Montreal has done a tremendous job. You look at what they're doing. Half of their, over half their roster, call-ups from the AHL. And here they are with the two-time defending champs, Lock 3-3. Three, three, Hi, halfway through the third, so they're doing something right. Obviously, they've got a goaltender who is feeling it tonight. He has stood on his head to keep them in this game. Vedemo made it 1 0. No arm in the air. Play continues. Braden Point had two goals to make it 2 to 1. Harvey Pinard tied the game for Montreal. Colton scored to make it 3 2 Tampa Bay. And then Kyle Clegg, his first NHL goal, ties it at 3. Here in the third. Orche's out there now, battling with Evans. To see if Tampa Bay can get some momentum along the blue paint. Kept in beautifully by McDonough. Shot on goal is wide. Down on his knee. Kachuk was trying to put that one in. There was some room on that short side. Look at the wheels of Alex Belzeal. Tampa Bay will get it and look to bring it out. Ruda and Hedman. Up to Joseph. Point Kalorin. So the big troops are out there for Tampa Bay. These are the five that can get it done. If they're looking to get the momentum back and get the lead back, here's Point looking for his first hat trick in over three years. Back to Joseph. He'll look to make a play to the net. Blocked. Bogosian in deep. Here's Point. Tries to dance around Savard. Can't do it. Here comes Montreal. Suzuki will dump it in, and Montreal will change. See, Bogosian jumped in the play there, went down low, and usually we're used to seeing Hedman do that, maybe a little bit of McDonough, but more and more I think that there is a green light from the bench for the defense to jump in the play. 9-17 to go. Braden Point and the Lightning. They've been a good overtime team this year. Maybe we're headed there.
Let's take a look at the standings brought to you by Crypto.com. There's Tampa Bay, number one in the Atlantic and number one in the NHL with those 44 points. Montreal headed for, of course, the lottery. Maybe they'll get lucky and land Shane Wright this year. And maybe Connor Bedard the year after that. Bedard's got a hat trick tonight for Canada as they're pounding Austria, out shooting them 60 to 20. Yeah, he's in pretty good company with 16 year olds and the scoring that he is showing for Team Canada. Shane Wright will likely be the first pick this summer in Montreal. So Montreal's hosting the draft this July. They will likely be in the running bottom three of the league to get the first pick. And if they're able to land Shane Wright in Montreal this summer, that would be the first step back to perhaps rebuilding this thing and use them with Suzuki and with Caulfield and begin that process of rebuilding this franchise. Because uh, really, they're almost starting over, AJ. Yeah, you know, and it's amazing that we're talking about this. We're just a, just half a year removed from them battling Tampa Bay in the Stanley Cup final and now talking about them landing the number one draft pick next year in the, in while they host the draft. It is amazing. They do need to rebuild. They have a lot of youth and they have pieces that they can build along. The question is, what do they do at the trade deadline? What do they do for this year? How do they start that rebuild process? Well, Jeff Gordon is in there. He's got a great track record of drafting in Boston, drafting for the New York Rangers. I think they got the right guy for the job. Yeah, and he does. He, he likes mobility. He likes building from the back end. He certainly has a, he knows what he wants. Eight and a half to go here. 3-3, three, three. Tampa Bay, Montreal. Again, it's a busy stretch here for Tampa Bay. Three games in four days. Turnover, Perry has it. Perry, short side in front. Just behind Alex Kalorn. Crowd really engaged here in Tampa Bay. Another beautiful day in Florida. Colton, speed, kick save. I want some bow as Colton with some good wheels on that off wing. Got a, a lot on that snapper. Well, and keep an eye on this line. This is the line that brings energy, brings grit, and has definitely scored some big goals for Tampa Bay. You see Colton take that shot. Maroon wasn't quite quick enough off the bench to get to that rebound. McDonough and Bogosian out there. McDonough will throw it in the far corner. Now Tampa Bay will try to get some offensive zone time here. Most of it's been in the other end. They've got to start with at least getting some momentum and some shots. But here comes Caulfield. He runs out of room. He'll dump and change. The hard part is when you get a line like that, they're on their heels. They have to defend, defend, defend. They finally get the puck, but they've got to chip it in and get fresh legs out there. Pretty even game. The score is tied. Shots on goal. Very close. 30-27. Both teams have won 28 faceoffs. They're dead even on the dots. Draw pass there by Alex Belzile. No one there. Puck comes out. Montreal will regroup. Under seven minutes left. You see the Lightning in one goal games this year. 11-0-4. That speaks to their experience. Turnover. That's not an experienced play. Walking in. Score! Holy shnikes! David Savard gets his first goal of the year in his 32nd game. Against his former team, they gave him a they gave him a, a standing ovation here. The team did, the Lightning did, and the crowd did in the first period during one of the TV timeouts to welcome him back to this building as he came over on the trade deadline from Columbus, went on to win a cup and a beautiful step by David Savard. You mentioned him on the penalty kill. He almost buried one there, and it's this turnover. It's the fourth line that's out there. It's a blind pass trying to get the puck over to Boris Kuchuk, and instead David Savard reads it, recognizes it, steps up, and buries it. That's a beautiful finish from David Savard. Got traded to the Lightning. Didn't score a goal. Goes on to win a cup. Comes here and signs with Montreal. Hadn't scored a goal before tonight. It's been a long time since he scored a goal. Last time he scored a goal, he was a Blue Jacket. It's been a long time, and, you know, a slow start here for Montreal. Two on one, Suzuki. Netting, wow. They almost made it 5-3. Yeah, you just look at the way they've got a little shot in the arm right now, and they it, the one good part, you look at somebody like David Savard, the experience he brings over with Columbus. He was a part of that team that that swept the Lightning back in 2019 and actually had a highlight reel goal going against Victor Hedman in that series. Went up 4-0 then, went on to the second round under coach, coach Tortorella, and then he was traded over to the Lightning where he was able to go on and win and provide some depth, some experience, and sort of some grip, but it certainly bailed out by all of a, just part of the depth 
And now here he is in Montreal. I think there are high expectations for him. Slow start, but what a big goal here tonight. Play. Turnover. Shot! Over the net. Point has another chance for a hat trick. Can't quite finish that one. Kalorn throws down Kulak. This is going to be icy. Braden point, point blank, just between the hash marks. Got him shaking his head. How did he miss that one? Yeah, there's some frustration right now for him. It's funny to hear when you got a, a two goals on the night, but look how all alone oh, he is and just crossbar. off the... I, I think Montembeau got a little knob of his stick on that too. Man, he can't believe it. Well, he's had some chances. He had those goals early in the first, in, uh, during the early in the game, in the first period, and then he's had a couple opportunities to complete that hat trick. Ruda, Headman fires right into the belly of Sam Montembeau. Good work by Montreal right now, boxing out in front of Montembeau. You can see Headman gets that that shot off, but there's no traffic in front. But Savard with a go-ahead goal. David Savard's dirty dangles. Look at him dance. Yeah, you know, he's got hands. He's got the ability to do it. It's amazing he hasn't scored a goal. Obviously, they've struggled for offense up and down this lineup in Montreal. And, uh, you know, I mentioned come to game over, slow start. Get, and he wasn't relied on to score goals when he came to Tampa Bay. No. With what they, the depth that they have up front and Victor Hedman. So, it, you know, you, you see that and you realize he's got real offensive upside. Well, we saw that graphic there, huh? First goal since against Tampa, and my boy Brian Engblom, the great color analyst, former NHL defenseman, says he danced Hedman when he scored that goal. Yeah, that well, that's the one I was talking about, the highlight yeah. real goal. That was in Col was right. Columbus, and it was, I remember I actually asked Savard about it. I said, <laughs> what, what do you remember when he got traded over here and now he's playing on the team with Hedman? He said, honestly, I blacked out. <laughs> it, it was a... An amazing goal and walked around one of the best in the league and scored a beauty. Yeah, well, he's, you know, fourth round pick of Columbus back in 09, a good blue jacket. He had scored 11 goals in 2014 15, you know, four, six, four, eight. But the last four years, his scoring has stopped. No goals in the 19 20 season, one goal last year in his first 40 games, traded to Tampa, no goals, and no goals this year until that beauty tonight. And it gives Montreal a 4 3 lead. Maybe the floodgates will open. Maybe. I seen again on Montreal. So now they'll try to bring this game home, AJ. And again, they have not been a good third period team. Minus 19 goal differential in the third this year. But the coaches team tonight, they're leading the third 2-0. Well, you know what? If you look at history, it doesn't matter. In the moment right now, they're up. They got a couple goals here in the third period. They're up by a goal, five minutes left. And you know, you look at the way Montreal is playing and they are, they are playing loose. Yeah, look, if you're Tampa Bay, you look back at all the posts that they hit. You look back to Kalorn's two breakaways. Joseph had an opportunity. They had their chances, and they did not capitalize. Yeah, they certainly played well enough, but not early in this third. Montreal took it to them, and that's when, obviously, they tied the game and then just took the lead there. But like you said, the posts, power plays look pretty good, but just haven't quite finished. Now they need to get the tying goal here. Late in third, here's point. He'll be out there a lot to finish this game. McDonough, Bogosian, D to D, staying wide to try to get those shooting lanes. There it is! Never got there. They hit Kalor. He's got a broken stick and he slams it down. Zach Bogosian back as there'll be fresh lightning players hitting the ice. But here comes Suzuki now. Suzuki goes around, but a good recovery by Bogosian late. As we approach four minutes to go in the game. Victor Hedman, nice play to point. He needs to change. He'll go to Maroon. Maroon. Broken up at the line. Kulak and Clegg out there now. Clay gets his first NHL goal. Here's Drouin. Saved by Legacy. Don't forget the Winter Classic is this Saturday on TNT. St. Louis and Minnesota should be beautiful and cold in Target Field. We got an ESPN Plus couple of games for you next Tuesday. Colorado, Chicago, Islanders, Seattle, and TNT's back at it next Wednesday. The Blues in Pittsburgh against the Penguins.
I'll be out in Seattle. I'm excited. It'll be my first trip to that new building. Very good. Winter Classic. I've heard temps of negative 14 Fahrenheit. Does that yeah. sound about right? Yeah, I heard about that. Oh, good play there. Coming from behind the net. Comes free. Good stick work by Hedman as once again, Raphael Harvey Pinard had a chance for a second NHL goal here in his first game. Tampa Bay's got to get going now. Got to get the puck at the other end and start getting some pressure on Sam Montembeau, who's been very good tonight. Tampa Bay has struck for three, but it could have been more. He has gotten some good play out of his posts as well. At least three, maybe four. Right up the middle, Jake Evans. Save by Legacy to keep it a one goal game. Now in transition, here comes Joseph. He'll go up to Colton. Couple of good skaters. Good play at the line. Ruta tries to keep it in. He can't. And Tampa Bay will have to go 200 feet again. Under three to go. Joseph dumps it in the corner, goes to get it and gets it to Maroon, comes back to Hedman at the point, goes between his legs to keep it in, uses that big body behind that Joseph, quick move, working on Kulak. Maroon comes to help out. Joseph can't get there, and Montreal's gonna bring it out. Corey Schuderman in his NHL debut, 64. The net is empty, extra attacker on, with just over two minutes to go. Tampa Bay trying to tie the game and force overtime. They've won seven games this year, in an overtime or a shootout, matching their total from last year. Point has two goals, looking for a Hattie, comes in, loses control to Pilat in the corner. Net is empty. Gallagher gets it out, but Stamkos is there. Plenty of time for Tampa Bay to get the tying goal. They have 32 shots. Montreal has 31. Pilat broken up by Gallagher. Backhander towards the net, won't get there. Duran will chase it down with Stamkos. He'll now try to kill time along the wall. Evans will help out. Tampa's got to dig it out. They do, and here they come. 200 feet to the other side of the ring. Kalorn, he's been a good playmaker tonight. He'll go to point. Point, walking in. Across, shot! That was a pass to Kalorn. Never got their rebound. Pilat! It's underneath Matombo, and there's the whistle. Wow, what an exchange. Great save there by Matombo, and get on top of it, make sure that there's nobody able to dig at that rebound. Oh, post again, AJ! Let's take a look at it here, and it's a pass across. You can see Corey Perry trying to get it across to Alex Kalorn. And that, up. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Direct hit. I, the post at the other end got most of the work out in the second period, but here's a look at Palat. Mm. Oh, game of inches. Timeout called. It's Tampa Bay's first with 124 to go. Give their offensive players a breather, design a play, and try to get that equalizing goal. Yeah, they've had their chances, and that was a beautiful play. You could see that they Montreal was impressed in the neutral zone, uh, that they took the time and space away. They didn't shy away from it, bought some time, and then Tampa Bay certainly went to work. Quick transition through the neutral zone. And as you mentioned, Alex Kalorn was the linchpin for that play. And really, both goals in the third period, AJ, were by defensemen. Yeah, you look at uh, Clay, beautiful goal for his first of his career pass from uh, from Caulfield. And then Savard, beautiful read coming across. And what about that finish? We talked about he hasn't scored a goal since 2019, but <laughs> doesn't look like it there. He looks like a goal scorer. Beautiful move. His 42nd career goal in his 643rd game. The first for Clegg in his 39th NHL game. So Tampa Bay, net empty, off a timeout. We'll try to win this faceoff, get pucks to the net, and try to tie this game and force overtime or a shootout where they've been very good. Faceoff won by Tampa Bay. Here's Hedman, the man you want with the puck. Palat along the wall, looking. Corey Perry's in front. Trying to screen Montembeau. Hedman over to Stamkos to look for him for the one-timer. Down low to Perry. Back to Hedman. Here's Palat. Point is between the hash marks. Stamkos ready for the one-timer. He's kind of low right now. Hedman will look. Five Montreal skaters clogging the middle of the ice. Kalorn. Back to Palat. Tampa needs a shot. Kalorn. In front! No, 
it stays out. Hetman will keep it in. He's got Pilat open. He sauces to Pilat, walking in slowly. They really want Stammer to get a shot. Shot by Hedman, blocked, never got there. Now Stamkos has it back to Hedman. Under 40 seconds to go. Palat, point, waiting for a chance. Stamkos at long last, block, shot, broken stick. Doesn't get out. Six on five with a broken stick. Suzuki goes to the bench and gets a new one. Point to tie it. No, it's wide. Pass in front. But he was using his stick to tell his teammates where he wanted the passes and where he wanted the puck to go. You can tell he really, truly is the quarterback of their power play. What a mistake by Riley Nash. That was the delayed offside. He should not have played the puck there. He does, and the faceoff comes all the way down to the Tampa Bay end to the left of Legacy. So 28-year-old Max Legacy with a little bit of pressure here. 12.2 to go. It's 4-4. Can Montreal get a... Last second goal here. Big face off. One by Colton. Great job. McDonough's in the corner. He'll try to kill this last 10 seconds. Too much time for that. Radish, good job to come over, but kept in by Kulak. See if Montreal has one more chance in the net. Never got there. We got overtime. And this overtime is presented by Fidelity. And Corey Perry, a good investment by the Tampa Bay Lightning this offseason. They bring him in just for that reason. Those hands down close to the net late in the game. His seventh goal of the season. Perry, Savard, two vets going head to head. Well, Savard takes it to get its go ahead goal earlier in the third period on a beautiful step right here against his old team. Came from Columbus to Tampa Bay, but he scores his first of the year against his old team. And then Corey Perry played with Montreal last year, went to the final against these Tampa Bay Lightning. And here he is playing in a blue jersey right now. And he's all alone left there. And as you mentioned, he's so good in front of the net. He's such a pest. He's got great hands. He's able to work in very small spaces. And you can see, you know, it's interesting. Montreal had collapsed so much in the middle in front of the net. But in that situation, they got sort of, they had been stuck in their D zone, so they were fatigued. But they got stuck puck watching and left Corey Perry all alone. So again, Tampa Bay's been very busy post regulation this year, as you saw by that graphic. And they've won eight of their last nine coming in, but also they've been, uh, they've been strong in overtime. They've won seven games in overtime or a shootout. Again, that matches their total from last season. They're seven and four overall. Steven Stamkos has two of those OT winners this year. Had a beautiful one in Boston. And uh, he's the guy to look to this overtime as well. The first one came against the Capitals, AJ. Well, we talk about how clutch he is, right? I mean, he scored the winner against Vegas, too. And that was uh, that put him in the lead for franchise against his mentor, Marty St. Louis. And he just scores big goals at big times. And for him, too, we talked about at the very top of the show, he has stepped up. With no Kucherov for the lot for most of the season since Game Three, and and Braden Point, who was out for 14 games, back here tonight with two goals. Braden Point will be looking to see if he can complete the hat trick with a game-winning goal. Stammer's got three game-winning goals this year, 65 in his Tampa Bay career. Maybe he'll get the overtime winner again tonight. When you look at that last the sequence that Tampa Bay had, they had five forwards and Victor Hedman out there. So really looking for offense. Obviously, it paid off. Here we go. Three on three overtime in Tampa Bay. John Butchergrass, A.J. Malesko, Victor Hedman, Alex Kalorn. Here comes Hedman. Braden Point, a goal away from a hat trick. Here's Kalorn. 
He's got Hedman coming late, keeps it in. Hedman with some momentum, wrist shot, save, rebound, Hedman, another shot, another save. And Montembeau hangs on. Two quick shots on goal from 77. Well, we've talked about Stamkos and his prowess in the overtime, but Victor Hedman has scored a couple overtime winners too, and he does them. Uh, when I've done some games where he's scored very early. He gets in there and he wants to put it away and get on top of instead of retreating, coming back in the neutral zone, as we see some teams do, and these guys may do, but early on, attack. See if they can get this overtime done early. Arizona, San Jose coming up on ESPN Plus. We haven't had hockey in six days, so take advantage of it, folks. Oh, what a play by Palat. The reverse hit almost created a late two-on-one down low. Stamkos knocks a man down. No penalty. Turnover. Hedman across. Andre Palat. Winner, winner. Chicken par dinner. The Lightning are winners five to four. Canadians are not happy. Two players knocked down there in the defensive end, and that creates the winning goal. Yeah, it's interesting. You look at that sometimes. You, you know the stereotype that refs will swallow their whistles in overtime or late in the tight games, but in this situation, the Tampa, Tampa Bay Lightning take advantage. And, you know, they were outplayed for stretches of that third period for sure. And as Steven Stamkos recently called them the Tampa Bay find a way yeah. because he said, you know, sometimes we're being outplayed, but we still find a way to win. And here he is, Stamkos, we just talked about it on the faceoff. And then a big reverse hit by Palat keeps the puck initially in the zone. But you know what? It's it's right there in, in on replay. Good non-call. Looks like he's going down anyway. What a beautiful feed. You've got Victor Hedman. He had those two shots in the first. Uh, sequence that they had, but watch him get down low. This reverse hit here that you talked about, but Victor Hedman's on the top of your screen right here, recognizes an opportunity here, and he jumps down while Stamkos comes back. It's a beautiful read by uh, Hedman, and obviously great finish by Andre Palat. Welcome to the Verizon post game. Tampa Bay has won four in a row, all by a one goal margin, and once again, Derek Lalonde behind the bench guides his team to a victory as John Cooper continues to get better at home as the three stars are announced. And good to see Max Legacy get the third star, and he'll give a fan a souvenir puck. These are the three stars of the game brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Second star. With his team winning goal of the season, number 18, Andre Pola. Seventh round pick, AJ gets his 10th goal of the year, the game winner in overtime from Czech Republic. What an awesome right. player he's been. Who's the first star? With two goals on his first two shots, number 21, Marina. So Braden Point returns. And he'll skate over towards our A.J. Malesko, throw on a headset, and talk about his return. First game back, and he had multiple chances for his second career hat trick. And I'm curious to see, A.J., how he felt about his play tonight and his uh, first game back. Well, well, we'll see if we get him here. And uh, Braden, can you hear me? And we can stand right over there. Right, right there would oh, okay, be perfect. perfect. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, thank you for thanks for coming over. I know that uh, you're coming back 14 game layoff and you come out huge two goals in the first period. Saw some frustration. Were you were you looking for that? What was going on? We're looking for that hat trick. Yeah, just I, I kept hitting uh, the knob of uh, Monty <laughs> stick. He was making some good saves on me and it just I just wanted to see it go in and it was a tight game that would have been would have been big. But, um, you know, Paris and Pally uh, bail us out. Yeah, that it, uh, it, what, it, what how do you coming off a game a, a long layoff like you have? I was talking about the timing and all that stuff. You looked great out there. What was the key to coming back right in game shape right off the bat? Um, well, I was able to get a lot of reps in, especially, you know, that holiday break kind of helped me get some reps in with the team. And, um, you know, I think I was just a little rusty and, you know, the cardio was a little off in the first little bit of the game and just kind of felt better as it went on. 
And you look at you right now, you've got your team, obviously Montreal more so, but you guys have a lot of players called up. What can you say about the next man up mentality for your team? Yeah, that's just kind of how the league is um, with, with what's going on. And I think um, the guys that have come in have done a great job. And, um, you know, we've always had guys step up, uh, you know, our key guys step up when, when guys are out. And, um, but yeah, you can't say enough about the job they've done. Uh, you look at Max tonight, it, it was great. And, and you guys have, uh, Steven Stamko said earlier, you guys are the Tampa Bay find-a-ways, which is interesting because you guys are two-time defending champions. How do you carry some of this momentum through to the next games, you got Florida, you got Carolina, you got or excuse me, New York coming up. What are, you got some big games? How can you try to uh, build on this? Yeah, I think just you know take take what you can and take the positive from the game and, and, and take what you can learn and try to try to do it better the next game. I think um, you know momentum is a funny thing and I think when you got it, you got to try to ride it and I think we got it right now. Well, congrats on a, on a big win and welcome back and thanks for your time. Thanks so much. December 7th in Montreal, Corey Perry tied the game with 4.09 to go. Andre Pilat won it with 38 seconds to go, 4-3. to three. Game two this year between these two. Again, Perry ties it, and Pilat wins it. What a game here in Tampa. Nine goals in all. Andre Pilat is the hero. Let's go back to the studio. Arda, Weeksy, Cali, Verizon, post-game show. Bucci, thank you.